Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not Islam is true and we are starting right now with Apostate Prophet's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us. Apostate Prophet, the floor is all yours. First off, thank you so much, James, for uh, organizing this. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Majid, for offering uh, this debate and for being here. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to have a proper uh, fruitful debate on this. So I want to uh, argue today for the idea, or as I see it, for the fact that Islam is not true, that Islam is false. And uh, I want to start immediately by uh, sharing a presentation in order to get a better understanding of what we are talking about if you can uh, see me I'm uh, yep. a weird down there in the in the bottom that's 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 good okay this is how it works so uh, we're talking today about why Islam is false um, Islam relies on the articles of faith as they are known. Some people know them as the pillars of faith or the, the, the articles of Iman. And these are uh, six in Islam. The belief in Allah, the belief in prophets, the belief in scripture, the belief in angels, the belief in predestination, and the belief in the afterlife. Uh, some of these, all of these are relevant to us, but one of these, which is angels, uh, cannot be, really be addressed today and is not very much relevant. It is more about the foundations of Allah, prophets, and scripture. We can elaborate on this whole issue more if you look at the Islamic creed. If you want to join Islam and you want to become a Muslim, then it is important not only to believe in Allah, but also to believe in Muhammad. The Islamic creed, the Shahada goes, I testify that there is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So it is not only sufficient to believe in Allah, but also to believe in Muhammad and to follow him fully. And in order to believe in Allah and Muhammad, you have to uh, also believe in the Quran and follow that to the fullest because the Quran is taught to be the perfect word of Allah revealed through the mouth, the lips of Muhammad. So what I want to do today is to uh, cross out angels entirely. It's not very much relevant. I want to focus on Allah together with predestination and afterlife because these are part of the entire doctrine of Allah. And I also want to uh, focus on the matter of prophets and on scripture. To be precise, when I say prophets, I want to precisely focus on Muhammad and on when I say scripture, I want to focus on the Quran. Now, uh, when we come to the first topic, which is Allah, the major foundation of Islam, we have uh, several, several thoughts here, several teachings, doctrines that come together with the belief in Allah. Those are that Allah created humans just so they worship him. This is mentioned in Quran chapter 51, verse 56. Allah created life and death to test humans. This is in uh, Quran chapter 67, verse 2. I will not further mention the chapter and verses. They are all attached to uh, right, at, right at the end uh, to make it easier. Allah uh, predetermined everything before it happens in a register uh, known as the book before he created it. The teaching is that Allah creates everything, decrees what will happen, and then he, cre and then he brings it forth, and then it happens only by his will. It says further in the Quran that Allah guides and misguides whom he wills and that nobody can guide someone whom Allah has not guided. It says in chapter 10, verse 99 and 100, I want to emphasize this because this is very important to me, it says that uh, no one can believe unless Allah wants them to believe. It says, uh, if Allah wanted everyone on the earth to believe, they would all believe. And it says no soul can believe except by the permission of Allah, very explicitly. Uh, further, it says in the first full chapter, which is Quran chapter 2, that Allah has set upon a seal upon the hearts of the disbelievers. And finally, one more example, Allah created many humans for hell in chapter 7. But I want to go fully into uh, this verse briefly because I think this is very significant. The verse clearly says, and we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. Jinn are not important to us. They are believed to be mythical parallel beings in the world. Uh, they have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see, and they have ears with which they do not hear. Those are like livestock. Rather, they are more astray. It is they who are the heedless. I don't want to focus very much on the whole you know, moral discussion of uh, what it implies that the disbelievers are like livestock. I want to focus more on the fact that the Quran clearly says that Allah created humans for hell. And they have, and they cannot understand, they cannot see, they cannot comprehend. Uh, 
Now, based on this, uh, apparently I need to skip, skip you on the screen. Based on this, we have the following thoughts. Number one, Allah creates humans just so they worship him, as the Quran says. But we also see that Allah creates many humans for hell. So he creates people just so they worship him, but he creates many humans for hell. Allah chooses what people will believe in. He decrees everything before it happens. That means Allah also chooses disbelief for humans. He decrees it. Allah guides and misguides whom he rules. By this, we understand that Allah does not guide the disbelievers. On the contrary, Allah misguides the disbelievers. In the explicit words of the Quran, Allah leads them astray. Allah punishes the disbelievers uh, for what he decreed upon them for disbelief. And finally, the final thought is Allah punishes his own perfect design. The thought here is that Allah, before creating humans, just so they worship him, he creates them in a very precise, very strictly designed way. He designs them exactly as they are. And then with the capabilities, with the you know, functions of their brain with their environment and everything that they have, which he perfectly designed by his will, he eventually punishes them for disbelieving and he rewards others for believing, although it is all his design, his creation, all his decree. Does that make sense? To me, it doesn't. I think I see here many major contradictions. By this standard, by this approach, I would come to the conclusion that the belief in Allah is a little bit nonsensical, it's not very coherent, it's quite illogical. Further, when we come to uh, Muhammad, which is the second topic, we have certain thoughts about Muhammad, which is that uh, Islam relies on Muhammad's prophethood. Islam reveals the Quran, which Allah reveals to him through his mouth to the audiences. According to the Quran and according to the Islamic narrative, Muhammad always speaks the truth. Muslims have the obligation to obey Muhammad fully and to believe him. That's what the, that's what the Islamic religion depends on. The Quran says that uh, Muhammad does not speak of his own desire. He is guided and inspired by Allah. He is always guided and inspired by Allah. If Muhammad makes false prophecies or you know spreads falsehood, he cannot be trusted and Islam crumbles. I want to come to one specific uh, hadith, one specific narration about Muhammad that I find uh, extremely crucial, which tells us a lot about who Muhammad was and what he said. In this narration, it says, a person asked Allah's apostle, when would the last hour come? Thereupon Allah's messenger kept quiet for a while, then looked at a young boy in his presence and said, if this boy lives, he would not grow very old till the last hour would come to you. This is in Sahih Muslim and a very reliable hadith by, by Islamic standards. So if it is not clear, the people come and ask him about the last hour, which as it is uh, familiar in the scripture, refers to the day of judgment. He then stops and says, "When the, uh, before this boy grows very old, the last hour will come. Now, Muslim apologists have reinterpretations for that, and I'm sure we will get into that. But it is very clear from a plain reading that this is a false prophecy. The last hour did not come. I don't think I have to say that. <laughs> um, by this, we can conclude the following syllogism. A, if Muhammad made false prophecies, then he is not a true prophet and Islam is false. B, Muhammad made a false prophecy. C, therefore, Muhammad is not a true prophet. Islam is false. We have, of course, more examples to that, such as that he said, I and the day of judgment have been sent like this, and he made a, uh, you know, a, a sign with his fingers, like very close, that soon there will be a huge treasure of gold uncovered by the Euphrates, which will go dry. The Euphrates did not go dry since then. That he said that Jesus will soon descend among you. Islam does take Jesus and reinterprets him. He says that there is a big turmoil at hand. This, this tribe called uh, Gog and Magog will soon invade the world never happened. We don't have any signs of such a thing. He said that the women of the Daoist tribe will, will move around Dhul Khalasa. Dhul Khalasa was a temple like the Kaaba in Yemen that existed that Muhammad later destroyed. So this prophecy is no longer possible. And finally, he also says that the sun will rise from its setting place, which is a completely false description of the world. But we will come to that in the next and final step, the Quran. 
the Quran, we have th certain teachings about the Quran, which the Quran tells uh, by, tells on its own. It says right at the beginning, this is the book about which there is no doubt. It further says, then do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from any other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. So by the Quran's own standards, since it is word for word, the speech of Allah, if it is from Allah, then it must be 100% true. If there was only one mistake, then Islam is false. Now, we have certain examples. Some of them are very popular. Others uh, are just uh, my favorites. It says uh, in the Quran that semen comes from between backbones on, and ribs. It says that stars are missiles that are thrown at rebellious devils. It says that the sun runs toward its resting place, literally, which is something that is explained even in more detail by Muhammad. It says that the moon has split asunder, the, the favorite belief that the moon has split in two in Muhammad's time, which is something that makes no sense because we would have uh, witnesses of that in the seventh century. We don't have a single one. The Quran further doesn't understand this, the nature of the sun, the moon, day and night, because it uh, makes it look like the sun has its light, the moon follows the sun, the day reveals the sun, and the night covers the sun. And further, it makes another mistake, I forgot to add the source here apparently, that Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah in chapter 9 verse 30, which is something that comes out of ignorance. There is no such Jewish belief, and it has never existed as far as we know. So the Quran is not a book that is full of guidance. The Quran is a book that is full of uh, some basic ignorant statements, as we can see here. And by this, I want to uh, make the following syllogism. If there is only one mistake in the Quran, then Islam is false. There are many mistakes in the Quran, therefore, Islam is false. I went very qu quickly through these uh, arguments and, and sources, but uh, the point is that we have these foundations, the Quran, Muhammad, and uh, Allah, for in order to verify whether Islam is true or not. When we analyze these foundations very thoroughly, we clearly see that these sources, these foundations are not reliable. They are very shaky. They uh, rest on very fragile grounds. And once further analyzed, they collapse and crumble, such as uh, just as Islam eventually then consequently crumbles. Therefore, I would say Islam is false with all the evidence that we have. I think that was 12 minutes, right? That was 12 minutes, exactly. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for that opening statement, apostate prophet. And folks, want to let you know, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. Also, my dear friends, we are very excited at the bottom right of your screen next week, a debate on whether or not the Bible promotes slavery. That's going to be an epic one. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button as you don't want to miss it. And so with that, we're going to kick it over to Dr. Abdul for his opening statement of 12 minutes as well. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Abdul. The floor is all yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And again, the greeting of Musa alayhi salam. Assalamu ala man al huda. The peace and blessing be of Allah upon those people who follows Allah's guidance. So alhamdulillah, James, if you follow Allah's guidance, peace and blessing be upon you. And I'm not wishing bad for you. I wish good and future also. I wish that you, peace and blessing be upon you. And uh, Ridwan, peace and blessing of Allah be upon you too, because we are here to discuss. We are not here to, you know, curse anybody. So that's fine. And the uh, first thing is, I would like to say that I was expecting, I was expecting from uh, Ridwan or James to introduce us about our qualification and our, uh, what, the expertise that we are in based on academic education, which I didn't, uh, you know, get from James, but uh, not even uh, <clears throat> Ridwan. And the second thing which I preferred that because my all my studies uh, is based on my Islamic study from Quran and uh, Hadith of Rasulullah and that too in Arabic as in a language, I preferred that these verses should be brought in Arabic and Ridwan would have read it in Arabic so that I can discuss with him in that sense, but doesn't matter what I have to say now, Islam is true. And that's from my perspective, not from the perspective of Ridwan or from James, because yes, that's very true that non-Muslims will never believe that Islam is true. So definitely we have to accept that, that this is how they believe. And that's the reason they want to 
prove it that this Islam is false and which Ridwan has done in, in a very short, uh, you know, discussion in the opening. So let me tell you first, Alhamdulillah, I will answer all his questions and I will reuse all his evidences from Arabic, but I maybe I'll not be able to finish all his arguments here. But let's see now the understanding of Allah. Uh, the argument that Ridwan has brought is uh, to on the other side. But let me tell you, Islam is true based on Allah is true. Quran is true and Muhammad Sallallahu is true. And that too is all based from the Quran and Hadith because that is the only source we Muslims believe in. So when we talk about Islam, Islam starts with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, which means it speaks about Allah and also it speaks about Muhammad Sallallahu And uh, truly, Ridwan said that when a person wants to become Muslim, he will say La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah, that there is no God to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's perfectly correct. A person cannot be a Muslim unless he believes in that. So let's see. When we say La ilaha illallah, that means there is no God to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only personality that to be worshipped. And that is based on uh, chapter uh, Surah at tur which is uh, verses 35 and 36, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear that Allah is existing. And Allah is the only deity that to be worshipped. And the reason is Allah has put this question. Allah has put this argument to the people who do not deny the existence of Allah. Allah has put this argument. Allah has said that are they created? Let me read that verse to you, all those people. Let me read that verse in Arabic and I'll give you briefly the explanation of that. Uh, it is in Sotu Tur, as you know. And this is the chapter 52. I want all my audience, especially non-Muslims, I'm not worried about the Muslims. They have already said something they want to say. So now non-Muslims, please, if you have the Quran in front of you, please read this. This ayah says 52, chapter 52, verse 35. Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun. Or were they created by nothing or were they creators themselves? So this is the first question that I... Uh, are they these people who deny, you know, the existence of Allah? So how did they come into existence? Did, did they create themselves? And uh, from what? Go back to the ayah. Are they created from nothing? Or are they creator of something? And then Allah says in verse 36 that Am samawati wal arda. Did they create the heavens and the earth? but they are not certainly they don't believe in that so this is from the muslim perspective and from the person who has got intellectual power to understand because there are such so many uh, existence in this uh, uh, universe that we see so the first question is that if you don't believe in allah as the creator then how did you create how did you create the things and how did you create yourself did you create yourself that is uh, certainly, uh, can somebody, like an example of a mother, can mother create herself? Can mother create mother? That this is, this is very clear, that he created from nothing, self-created, created by something created, or created by something uncreated. So therefore, there has to be someone, and that is a part of the rura, which Ridwan will understand from Turkish language. We call it in Urdu as well, Zaruri. And in uh, uh, Turkish also we say darura, and that's a concept which is in English we call necessity. So by necessity, there has to be one creator, one creator, then there comes the creations. So all that is answered there. So why only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then we can say that the people may say, why only one Allah? Yes, of course it is only one Allah. Because even when we see I came from the, you know, martial art field, when you go into the ring, you cannot have, you know, two winners. They may draw, but still one will be still heavier than the other one or overpowering one over the another. And there will be a chaos, like you can see now uh, Tyson Fury and uh, uh, Wilder. They're all now going for the third fight because they don't want to accept, they don't want to accept, you know, one king in the boxing ring. So that's, this is how. So this is the answer that it is only one God. And Allah SWT has said in... Surah Al-Isra, 
Allah has said, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ مَعَاهُ آلِهَةٌ كَمَا يَقُولُونَ إِذَّا لَبْتَغُوا إِلَى ذِي الْعَرْشِ سَبِيلًا that if there would have been another, these people used to say that why only one Allah? Why we can't worship Lat Manat and Uzza? Why we have to only worship one God? Then Allah SWT has said, if there were other gods along with Allah, as they say, then they had sought a way against the Lord of the throne. Means they would fight with each other and become a chaos. And that has to be very, very clear that uh, they would ultimately overpower one another and consequently destroying each other, ca causing chaos, destruction and complete non-existence. Or one will be overpowered ultimately, and but any, any who is overpowered being cannot be all powerful. Definitely one has to be the powerful one. And no matter how many gods you bring, 10, 20, 1000, the same principle will be applied. So by necessity, it has to be only one and only who is independent and all-powerful. Yes. Now, when we go back to the Quran, uh, no other book on the face of the earth can, you know, define God like this. The rest of the things I can discuss with uh, Ridwan, and I can speak from Arabic perspective, how the verses go and how he has understood because he can't just bring the translation and say that we have to go back to our own sources to understand Arabic, uh, Quranic Arabic, the verses from the Arabic language and Arabic understanding, and from the Hadith too. So this is very clear. No other on the book on the face of the earth has this definition what Allah, uh, the Quran gives about Allah SWT. So that gives, gives the priority of Quran to over other, that's the only word of God can be like that. And the closest, the oldest testament is the, the closest for, without falling into contradiction. So the, 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 there's all the books you will find, they will be having a con contradiction. And the most closest book on the face of the earth, uh, other than Quran is the Old Testament that the Christians are having in their hands, that is Bible. And the Bible too has got the contradiction about the definition of one God. And the New Testament is talking about the Trinity. So, so alhamdulillah, only Quran is free from all these contradictions when it comes to the clear definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, all the miracles of the Quran are also just bonus evidence. So we'll talk about the rest of the thing. Let's let, let go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. According to Ridwan, whatever he has said, we will discuss that by points and points, inshallah. So let's see first. There is no doubt about his existence. Even the non-Muslims have confirmed that Prophet Muhammad was there. And we can see the, the book that is written in the history that he is one of the top out of 100. He's the top man who has the, the name of the book is the 100, a ranking of the most influential person, persons in history. And that was by Michael, you know, the famous author. And he brought Muhammad on the top. Uh, amongst the hundred and being a Christian, he brought Jesus in the third number. So that's within itself in day, day and age today, it confirms that Muhammad is existing and he gave the reason why he's better than uh, Jesus. And as far as Jesus is concerned, only Quran speaks about his existence beside the Bible. Otherwise, no other religion has spoken any existence of. So Jesus existence is doubtful. Moses existence is doubtful. But we also believe in that. And same thing, if he was a liar, like seeking fame and fortune, then he could have become a oh, womanizer or world lord, etc., etc. Then all opportunities that he had, even before becoming the prophet, he could have taken one of them, like he was offered a beautiful girl. He didn't take that. He was preferring to stay with the widows and divorces. And where women were much older than him in age. So this is one thing. He was offered the wealth. He didn't accept it. He was given the position to become a leader. And he didn't say that. He didn't accept that. And he was also given, you know, uh, so many opportunities to, uh, and then finally they decided that he might be in delusions and he might be, you know, a, man, a possessed person. So they tried to get him his spiritual treatment. All these things have been proven wrong because he was someone who has brought the new civilization he has changed the Arab world in 23 years, and he has brought all this. You know, his Quran was a debate for the people who were known as the best poets of his time, and he was the best amongst them. He could have become a poet and could have got the fame and name, but all these things. Do. And 
this was the problem today that the people they don't understand arabic but those people they understood arabic that's why whatever said by muhammad they did not accept it that it cannot be from a person like him he could be a magician or he could be a soothsayer or he could be a mad person because it's something is coming out of him which is not from a human being so i rest my case with this thank you you bet Thank you very much for that opening statement, Dr. Abdul. And want to let you know, folks, regarding the format, we have these 12-minute openings followed by six-minute rebuttals, which we're about to jump into. And so I want to remind you, our guests are linked in the description. We really do appreciate our guests. And our guests are also linked in the description box for the podcast of this episode or debate, as we do have a podcast, which is linked in the description. And with that, we're going to kick it over to Apostate Prophet for his six-minute rebuttal. Thanks for being with us. And the floor is all yours. So um, what I got from uh, Dr. Abdelmajid's opening statement is I didn't get anything, honestly, not, not very much that I can uh, argue with. Uh, he made a few responses to the things that I that I said. He didn't exactly respond to anything I said, as I see it. When it comes to the Quran, he basically said that the Quran um, is the word of God because it is the word of God. He said that there are no flaws in the Quran because there are no flaws in the Quran, which is uh, you know, circular reasoning to me. Uh, you know, I, I would bring up many flaws, many mistakes, many contradictions in the Quran, but uh, as it seems to me, his intention is simply to dismiss them by either saying, uh, let's read the Quran in Arabic, not in English, which I think is unnecessary, and we wouldn't consider something like that necessary in any other field. The Quran is a book like many others. It, it is not full of some very uh, secret uh, message that can only be codified, that can only be encoded in uh, its own original language. We have, uh, we use translations and interpretations, authorized uh, translations and interpretations of the Quran by Islamic scholars for 1,400 years, as we use translations and interpretations for many other books in the world. So when we read the Quran and we uh, see many statements therein that are obviously flawed, we have to deal with those. We can't just say, well, you have to read it in Arabic or, or uh, the Quran is true because the Quran is true. We have to deal with the subject matter. When it comes to Allah, uh, he basically said, I'm sorry, I don't want to misrepresent uh, you, but you, uh, Dr. al Majid basically said, um, Allah does exist because if Allah doesn't exist, then how do you exist? Or I think he said it in a, in a much less uh, in, in a worse way, to be very honest, he said, uh, if Allah did not create you, then who created you? That is, I think that's, uh, that question doesn't entirely make sense. It's like saying, if you don't believe in a creator, then who created you? Or to be uh, more precise, if you don't believe in creation, then who created you? I don't believe in creation. So the question, who created you, would not really make sense to me. But then again, that wasn't really the point of, uh, of the whole discussion around Allah. I don't discuss theism, I don't discuss creation, I don't discuss uh, the uh, origin of existence and the nature of being. That is something that I think is rather irrelevant to the discussion of whether uh, Islam is true or not. If there was a creator, if we did come to the conclusion that a creator exists, then that creator could be anything. It could be an uninvolved, unconcerned creator. It could be the creator of Christianity or of different religions around the world. That doesn't do much to the question of whether Islam is true or not. Uh, he basically said Allah exists because Allah exists, but there was no evidence attached to that. Um, his, his approach to why Allah exists is basically like saying, if there is no thunder God, then who sends thunder? Or uh, jinns, according to Islam, are made of smokeless fire. They are, made, they are these, these creatures that nobody sees and they are made of smokeless fire. Fire. And his question would be something like, if you don't believe in smokeless fire, then what are jinns made of? Well, I don't believe that jinns exist, so it would not make many, much sense to ask me what they are made of. Um, or, or it would be something comparable to, um, if there is no cycle of reincarnation, then how are you being reincarnated? Well, I don't believe in reincarnation, so I don't, I don't expect to give an answer on how the reincarnation works. So I don't believe that Allah uh, exists. I don't believe that Allah is true. I don't believe that the foundations of Allah are solid, are 
convincing and I gave many reasons for that such as that the entire nature and the theology of Allah is flawed it doesn't make sense for the perfect and almighty and all-knowing Allah to uh, exist to create us flawed beings and then to judge us based on what he himself designed in the very beginning uh, if if I could be convinced that that makes it uh, sense that that is coherent then we could talk about the nature of Allah but we haven't solved that problem and we can't just skip one major problem and then go on to circular reasoning. When it comes to the issue of Muhammad, um, Dr. Abdul Majid basically uh, said that there is no doubt to his existence. I agree. I, I wouldn't say no doubt, but I don't doubt his existence and I don't argue uh, against the idea that Muhammad existed. Honestly, it's rather irrelevant to me. What matters to me is that we have a character named Muhammad and whether he truly existed or not is very much besides the point. What matters is uh, all the things that he is supposed to have done and supposed to have said and whether we can rely on those things or not, whether we can take his prophecies as true prophecies or not. We have a lot of evidence that he made false prophecies. Of course, you could say we have a lot of evidence that he made true prophecies and that he was a good guy but that doesn't mean much if we also know that he was not such a good guy and that he made false prophecies which invalidate all the good if you if you only made one false prophecy and we can verify that then the 99 true prophecies can be dismissed because he made a false prophecy and we have proof for that if we have proof for that uh, when it comes to the whole issue of uh, Muhammad was a was the most influential uh, character uh, and that was declared by in a list of the most of the hundred greatest characters in history a list made by Michael H Hart it's not something that I consider relevant to the issue but I still can't help but uh, comment on that that is only one list of many lists in the world that were, were made about the most influential or greatest people in the world. That one happens to be one that lists uh, Muhammad as the first. The problem is that this list was made by a person called Michael H. Hart, who is not a historian. He is actually an astrophysicist and also a white nationalist, by the way, who has a problem with Christianity and who therefore wants to divide the influence of Jesus into Paul and Jesus okay. and I'm put like Muhammad that. on top of that. So uh, in Muhammad being a good guy in, in, in an environment that is described by Islam as the age of ignorance, the, the pre-Islamic Arabs who believed in the most ignorant things is not really proof that he was a truthful prophet. Thank you so much. We will, thank you very much. Uh, Passe Prophet, we will kick it over to Dr. Abdul for his six minute rebuttal as well. The floor okay. is all yours. Thank you very much, James. James, my humble request to you is that please, uh, if he needs one or two minutes extra to say, then that's very fine. And uh, now I can only, you know, put down all his arguments with due respect to him. I, I have a very high respect for every human being, regardless of uh, what he says, what he does and what he understands. Now, let me tell you one thing. He brought the uh, final thing about very academic point, which he has referred to Michael H. Hart. OK, that's fair, fair enough. And he is he brought his qualification. He's saying he's not an a uh, historian so my question to you are you are you a clergy muslim ex clergy muslim were you qualified to be an imam and mufti and a scholar to <clears throat> bring these ideas of the quran and you did you study this from the classical sources and then you understood it that this is wrong from their sources and if that is the case then you can object Mr. Man who wrote the book, okay? Uh, one out of 100. So that is your relevant point. But since you are, you yourself has said in the, one of your recent videos, when somebody asked you, if not Islam, then what is, you know, uh, what is the other alternative? There you have admitted yourself. You said that you are dumb like you miss your audience and views that's I, I don't accept that you're not dumb you're very clever and maybe your people the follow the people who are following you maybe they are dumb but i don't look at you as a dumb and you are not you are saying you're a simple critic of islam which shows that you uh, you are not even qualified for to be like that why i'm saying because all those questions you have said i will bring each and every verse and hadith of yours to tell you that you read only the translation of the scholars you have not understood their commentaries. You have understood it that way. So all it is your understanding. And the same verses I will read. I will re read it from our sources. And as an authority in my religion, yes, authority in my religion, I have access to all the classical books where 
it explains these verses and uh, and most of these scientific things that you have brought about sun moon this and that i can just tell you allah is not telling any muslim scholar or any lay muslim to go and do the research scientific research on that we are not concerned about that we are just known that allah is the creator and if not then first question again comes back to you if allah is not the creator then who has created the one who is saying i'm i'm existing so that's very clear i can say that who created you people how did you come into existence created you have to tell me if some, something is existing on the face of the earth how did that come into existence that's my question and if these things are not clearly understood then how can we say that you know you can deny the existence of allah and plus are you historian are you a scholar of uh, quran are you a scholar of hadith are you like you said that in one of your debates uh, in your question and answer that you have you were imam and you were like you know your father was teaching and you were reading quran and and, and you also supported someone when quran was challenging that bring someone something like quran you brought abdullah gondal who can't even speak arabic properly and he wrote the poetry a surah chapter and believe me farid has given the answer to that but alhamdulillah i told my team that farid should have spoken about the grammatical thing of that because quran in its language itself is a miracle which many people they don't understand and that's why i feel more comfortable and easy if you would have discussed with me all these verses about allah you brought here and the screen i have made as you know <clears throat> screenshot on that and i'll discuss with that and i will explain to you look and the audience will decide how i understand and i don't rely on the translation because uh, english can be you know understood in any way if somebody is saying okay you you know this is a chinese book and read and as somebody may be reading the chinese book what's the point of reading the chinese book if he doesn't understand what chinese is so uh, that's the reason i said that i prefer that you few would have discussed but i will definitely discuss with you so my points are still there prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a well known person because you don't you are not historian and you have you do not have correct historical base from our our sources that's why you have picked and chose you know certain things about a negative of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you did say in your point that please before converting to islam you must know that muslims always speak good 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 about allah rasul and quran but there are certain things crucial things that you should know so you brought all those things i can say you are specialized in that but academically i can say that like J james is going to do his phd now james if he has to you know work in the university and teach the subject which he has done phd in definitely the university will accept him if i want to teach islam if i want to teach uh, because my phd is in business administration i as an academic i can teach lectures on business administrations on economics on finance all that but as far as your part is concerned i think that you have already i have got list of 13 points which you have put yourself very clear that you don't stand anywhere even in criticizing islam because you are not even qualified to do that so but still that is your understanding of the quran and allah and rasul so this is what i wanted to just end up here that your argument is still baseless because that is your understanding and your understanding is wrong and inshallah we'll discuss further more inshallah you got it thank you very much for that rebuttal we are going to move into open discussion folks so with that gentlemen i hand it over to you for the next 45 minutes in free and open dialogue uh what i find a bit disappoint i'm very disappointed honestly um <laughs> <laughs> no, I am very disappointed. I have to say that I'm, I, have, I have to be very honest. I think um, it doesn't. It's not very useful to appeal to authority and appeal to education and t try to target me personally. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, no, no, I, no, 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 I talk no, no, no. to everybody regardless of their degrees. When I brought up Michael H. Hart, I brought him up because it was your appeal to authority, which I then responded to. I don't really care who writes what. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't matter what kind of an education I have. I honestly think that Islam is. Uh, a very weak topic and that one doesn't need to be uh, very highly educated in Islam. I am very well educated in, in Islam and I, I, 
keep reading uh, on Islamic creed and Islamic jurisprudence every single day. And I have been doing so for a long, long time. But I don't even think it is necessary. That is necessary. The, the issue is that I have presented a lot of uh, points, a lot of arguments and a lot of evidence. And people are, I mean, the audience is waiting for those, for the evidence to be refuted and responded to. If we spend time just, uh, you know, targeting each other and, uh, you know, making accusations instead of uh, or dismissing those arguments, then the issue will not be resolved and people will just go away from this by uh, concluding that uh, the evidence has not been refuted and, you know, the case against Islam is therefore stronger. Dr. Abdul Majid, I mean, that's just my observation. No, no, uh, Ridwan, please, honestly, as I said that you're Olu, that means you're just like a son to me. I respect you for, for that, okay? Second thing, I didn't discredit you. You just brought the man and you compared his faith. You said that he is not historian and he has problem with the Christianity. So I brought that thing that if I compare him, still he's an authority because he is a learned man and he's an author of great book. And uh, like James, again, James, when are you going to start the lectures in the uni, James? Oh, I already teach classes as an instructor, but as, uh, See, as I mentioned. And don't, don't, don't you know that academically, when you want to teach a subject, James, won't they ask you about your qualification, your experience, your DBS, and et cetera, et cetera? They, I, I don't want to get too involved in the debate. So just to be <laughs> no, sure no, no, that no. it's a James, conversation James, between you guys. I, I, I don't consider this as debate. I consider you people as my brothers in you know, for humanity. That's why I'm openly, because this is, I want the environment should be not debate as a fighting and refuting and no, just a Fair natural enough. understanding. The discussion then. Yes, yes, this is the discussion. And I'm just, uh, because I'm a teacher myself, I have been teaching here in the universities and primary schools, high schools. So I know being an Indian and having this qualification, I had to go through so many other, you know, questions and prove myself that I'm qualified to teach. That's what I'm uh, just the, for that point. But as far as, Ridwan is concerned. So if he, if with your permission, Ridwan, uh, we'll take Allah's topic first and we'll talk about the six verses. If you give me enough time, then can you, can I speak that from Arabic perspective? Well, uh, I mean, we, we would have to go back and forth. Uh, I mean, you, you can talk about them. It's just, we can't turn it into a, uh, into a lecture on one part. I mean, you said we should, we're not supposed to, we're not expected to review the Quran scientifically. I completely disagree. I think no, no, we're no, supposed I, to I, review I the Quran entirely and we need, we need to know everything. So can we discuss the points that I brought up or can you bring, uh, can you bring evidence to tell us why Islam is true? Can you refute my evidence as to why Islam is false? Okay. I'll take that. your slide. I'll take your slide. Number one, you said that it is. Let me go to this verse first. Okay, we'll take about it, and then I'll give you time. And you, you didn't tell me what is your main source of learning uh, this Quran. What is your main source? I read the Quran through myself uh, with um, transliteration, Arabic and Turkish side by side in uh, twice when I was a Muslim. Uh, I read it again in Turkish when I was uh, when I left Islam or when I was leaving Islam. And after that, over the years, I have read the Quran in many different translations and interpretations in Arabic uh, with the Arabic transliteration. I don't speak Arabic. I only uh, analyze Arabic and know very much about the, the structure of the language. But yeah, I've, I've read it in many different authorized translations any any uh, our our classical book of commentary did you read any specific i read Arabic big Arabic? chunks of of uh, tafsir ibn kathir i read big chunks of uh, of tabari as much as it is available to me it's not available fully in english so it's it's a bit problematic uh, and some other is tafsirs this, i did is this the tabari tabari that you read what uh, abdullah gundal was saying uh, Jalal Tafsir Jalalain? No, 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 no. That's that's different. But I I want to go into the translations. You know, I don't really I don't think it is relevant to me to rely on what Muslim uh, scholars and exegetes say about certain about certain uh, texts in the Quran. The issue is the average layman, the average Muslim or non-Muslim, will not rely on or even end up looking at the scholars. They will look at what the text says and judge it based on that, and then decide not to believe in this religion. So we have to talk about it. Yeah. You know? No. Okay. Okay. Uh... Uh, Ridwan, if you write a book, okay, on any subject, 
And if I, I'm as a layman, if I have a question which I don't understand or don't agree with you, shouldn't I have the right to ask you the question? Explain me this. Sure. But the thing is, if I read somewhere, people asked Muhammad, when is the last hour? And Muhammad said, before this boy gets old, the last hour will come. Then I will say, uh oh, he made a false statement. Look at this. I will not go to a scholar and say, can you please explain? Can, can anybody please explain this to me? Please explain why this is uh, actually not false, why this is actually true. You know, I, I will have to look at the text and conclude what, what it says. OK. Okay, uh, uh, okay, I'll come back to that, but I'll tell you, when you are saying about uh, that particular hadith, I'm not going into that because I want to deal with every evidence of yours step by step. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you, you cannot say, you cannot say that the Quran, you know, can be understood or can be accepted or can be rejected just merely reading the translation. There are thousands of translations out there. And the one, one translation can be, you know, have you studied the eight parts of a speech of English grammar? Sorry, this is not test. I'm, I'm saying just generally, because see, when you read uh, the uh, English translation of the Quran, there are pronouns, pronouns which are singular pronouns, and there are role pronouns. And they, the role pronouns can be plural form, like we, nahnu, like that. So I'm saying that based on that, the translation could be different. And in English, we have a dual and singular and plural, but there is no specific word to define numbers two, like two, two things, dual. But in, in uh, maybe, uh, please, uh, excuse me, my uh, accent could be different because I'm, English is not my first language. So don't make a joke of my English language, okay? No problem. Okay, second thing. In Arabic, we have, we have, when we say one pen, qalamun. When, when we say two pens, we say qalamani. When we say more than two, we say aqlam. So in Arabic, the translation cannot be reliable source. And if somebody brings the Quranic verse and speaks about the science, which was uh, something that was revealed into 1400 years ago, and the science is saying something today, maybe after 10 years, the science would change its mind and come up with another theory. So you are basing your, you know, uh, argument based on the science or you are basing, you are putting your argument based on the Arab English translation. That's unfair, Ridwan. You have to reflect back. If you really, I can say that, look, look, if you would have been Hafiz of Quran, yes. And if you would have been scholar in Arabic literature, which I am, I've done my master's in Arabic literature. I'm not showing off, but I'm telling you that if, if you have got that, you know, education to understand the Arabic of the Quran, and you have referred to the Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Tabri, not the Jalalain of uh, Abdullah Gundal. He can't even know who is the author of the Jalalain, and he's bringing Imam Tabri. And so you brought let, his... let's let's not attack uninvolved people here. That's that's not the point. No, no, no. You brought his his surah. You brought his surah to defend the argument that the Quran can be chapters can be produced. And I thought that, Ridwan, if I had your personal number, I would have explained to you, Ridwan, this is a serious grammatical mistake in his first verse. So, okay, let's go to the, the so he, he, Here is the issue, Dr. Abdul Majid. Here's the problem. Uh, so um, what you're suggesting is basically we have many authorized Quran translations. Some of them were authorized by very high uh, Islamic authorities. We have uh, Sahih International. We have uh, Pekt Hall. We have, I don't know, Mustin Khan. We have all these English translations. We have new ones that are, I don't know, uh, MAS Abdul Halim or whatever it's called. Uh, we, have, we have these very authorized, very, uh, you know, good, accurate uh, translations of the Quran. We have translations in different forms. These are authorized. Uh, you are basically trying to dismiss the authorized certified Quran translations. No, no, no. On the other no, hand, no. we uh, it is a little bit absurd to expect that in order to understand, in order to uh, judge, and in order to believe in the Quran or disbelieve in the Quran, we would have to read it in its or or original language. That's an unrealistic expectation. The vast majority of Muslims no, 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 don't no, speak no, Arabic and don't language. understand Arabic. So people who convert to Islam don't understand Arabic. Most Muslims don't understand Arabic. It is, no, no. <laughs> you would have to it's, rely it's on certain people who can tell you anything. Them. No, no, because Ridwan, if they don't know, I know so many. Uh, I, I'll speak with those verses. Please give me time. I'm not escaping. I'm not running. And I'm. The thing uh, is, we should focus on we should focus on the evidence instead of trying to argue about no, uh, no, about no, the issues your around it. Is based on the translation, that's what I'm saying. So okay, then, then, then let's talk about your interpretation of it. 
yes, you are, and the translation will not give you the something that has been revealed 1400 years ago. Okay, then and tell me where it's wrong and tell me the correct version of it. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm coming to you. Somebody, something has happened 14 years ago, and now you are just bringing one sentence of that and you're bringing the whole, uh, making a whole story about it. That does not make any sense. You have to have a historical background. Okay, Why I'm sorry, but you have to point written? out where exactly I am wrong instead of trying to, you know, talk about uh, what yeah, I'm, your, what your I'm supposedly doing. That you are, you are not referring, you can read the Quran and you may understand, but you can say, I don't understand it. So how can I make you understand if you don't go to the main sources? Then why the are we debating? Then why are we debating, Dr. Abdul Majid? If, we, if yes, you're just yes. going to say we can't understand it and, and that's how we just move on, yeah, with that's it, what how, I'm saying. why no, are I'm we debating here? You. Okay. Will you respond since, to the issues? No, 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 Rivan, since you said this, I'm coming to it now. Okay, let's go. Let's have a proper, you know, uh, give and take. You have brought this to Dariyat, chapter 51. Uh, chapter, yes, it is. This chapter 51 is, this verse 56. Chapter, chapter 51 and verse 56. It is very clear, I believe, that Allah is the creator and uh, Allah created the jinn and ins to worship him. So what's your problem with this? It's clear. You tell me what, what, you, what was the problem with this? Let's the problem, understand words by words now. The problem with this is that this is not uh, solely on its own a problem. This is an, a problem together with the other verses connected. Because this verse says, Allah created humans just so they worship him. But then we also find in the Quran that Allah created humans for hell. Allah decreed disbelief and so on. So my question would be, if Allah created humans just so they worship him, then, you know, mindlessly, then why did he create humans flawed? Why did he design humans? Why why did he decree disbelief for them and why did he create many of them for hell if it was okay. if worship is his object uh, is his, uh his 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 mission then why do all these things it doesn't make sense that's a contradiction in and of itself okay. the, the first question about this first objection about this let's start with this that were allah created the people jinn and ins to worship him okay so what's your first objection why did he create them and why is he going to punish them then that's that's the thing it is if he created humans to worship him then why did he create people who will not worship him and why did he decree disbelief for them okay is that the only question now? that's the first question of many first yeah. question okay now tell me tell me suppose if if you are uh, registering or enrolling in the university and at the first gate you are told now because you don't have islamic background to understand tell me that i understood this from the your sources so i'm telling you like for example if you go to a university and the principal or the head of the university says that look to enroll this in this university you have to maintain this criteria and one of the criteria is that you have to uh, attend the class you have to attend the lectures you have to attend all the courses and then you have to attend the exam and if you don't then the consequences will be xyz is that wrong if you failed and you didn't mention that? Is that wrong? That doesn't answer the question because the problem here is there is a huge difference. I see the university. I go to the university willingly. I know the, the, the rules of the university. I know the principle and the tests that are given to me. I know what will happen if I fail the test and so on. When it comes to Islam, it is only a belief, only a claim. I don't see Allah. I don't know that Allah does indeed exist. I don't know if the test is exactly as it's told. I don't see the results of the test. So this is a completely false comparison. And on the other hand, and on the other hand, the university only prepares me for something that they have to do. Whereas Allah is almighty, all knowing. He wants to create humans just so they worship him. But then he goes ahead and creates people who will not worship him. No, no, Why? no, 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 no. He didn't create the people. You bring me one verse in the Quran where uh, it says that he was just merely going to put some people in the hell. Now that's a challenge to you. Bring one verse from the Quran where the, the verse that you have quoted six verses doesn't say anything exactly what you're saying. Let's see. Okay. This is my challenge to you. 
Okay, very easy. Uh, Quran chapter 7, verse 179, it says, And we have certainly created uh, for hell many of the jinn and the mankind. They have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see. And they have ears with which they do not hear. Those are like livestock. Rather, they are more astray. It is they who are the heedless. I repeat the very beginning. And we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and the mankind. Why? Why? What do you mean why? <laughs> why? Why Allah created? Why Allah is going to put them in the hell? You're missing the point in the verse. Tell me. Tell me about it. Now Allah gave them the eyes to recognize the truth. And, and this is the same thing. The, the head, the university gave you the principle. You don't want to follow the principle and then you fail. So if you have failed, then you have failed. So Allah gave you the eyes to find the truth, see the truth. Allah gives you ears to hear, hear the truth. And Allah gave you the heart or intellectual to, to accept the truth. And if you don't, and then you are expecting Allah to hug you and say, okay, come on, Ridwan, chalta here, no problem. No, you can't expect Allah to do that. And why Allah is only choosing them and not those who are obeying Allah's command? Why? So Allah, wherever the, any verse that you are quoting, people may be not listening to you or maybe not going back to your references when properly studying that. But everywhere, even the verse you quoted from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, 6, 7, the, even that in Arabic, it says, Inna ladhina kafaru. Inna ladhina kafaru. This is a past tense. And people who disbelieved in Allah, so there's the consequences. The result okay. will come. Okay. Allah is nowhere. Allah is nowhere saying, I merely chose X for the Jannah. Whatever they do, I don't care. I chose, you know, these people, B for Jahannam, and I don't care. But this is my choice. I created them, and I, I'm choosing them to go to Jannah. Jahannam. No, the going to Jannah and Jahannam is our choice. And that okay. is what I'm saying. Okay. The people going to the university. Passing, failing, it's their choice, their way. They do you're, you're, you're missing the point. You're not responding to the question again. Uh, as said, the university is a false comparison because I know about the university. I know about its laws. I know about the test. I know about the consequences. When it comes to uh, Islam and Allah, it is merely a belief. It is something that I'm supposed to believe in, supposed to be convinced by. I don't actually see uh, what is, what is expected from me and what the consequences of it are. Secondly, it is a false comparison because, uh, as said, the university is something that is necessary in an environment in order to take you somewhere. It is not an almighty uh, facility an almighty faculty that could just make you perfect and then present you to society. On the other hand, Allah is the one who originally creates you. He wants, he is almighty, all-knowing, and he creates people so they worship him. But then he goes ahead and he designs me, for example. He designs me exactly as I am, with my brain, with my eyes, with my capabilities, with everything, and my environment in such a way that I will be uh, eventually unable to believe in him and eventually make the mistake of not believing in him and go to hell this is what he created so he punishes me for his own creation and his own decree my capabilities were he were created entirely by him because everything is cre his creation and my choices in life were entirely decreed by him because everything is his decree nothing that i do can logically be outside his design outside his creation outside his decree so if allah wants to create humans just so they worship him then why doesn't he just create people so uh, who worship him okay. and instead creates people and designs them for disbelief and consequently for hell? Okay. Do you have a pen and paper, please? Sure, yeah. Okay. Chapter Hood. Chapter Hood. I'm giving you answers for all the questions and objections that you have asked about Allah. Chapter Hood, which is chapter 11 and verse 119. Okay. Okay. It says, Illa man rahima rabbuka wali dhalika khalaqahum wa tammat kalimatu rabbika la amla anna jahannama min al jinnati wa nasi ajma'een. The last part is yours. And the first part is supporting me. And this is very clear. Accept him on whom your Lord has bestowed his mercy. Accept, you see, Allah is saying that there are followers of shaitan and they followed him instead of following Allah. And this is, this is not, Allah is not saying what Allah has destined for you. Allah has already, and I'll bring all these evidences to answer your question. This ayah 
it says that Allah created all the people to believe in him. He has not, you know, created them to disbelieve in him. And this verse says that, and what is the proof of that? Allah has created them so that they believe in him. Your, your understanding is wrong from one verse. You are saying Allah created them for Jannah and Jahannam. No, Allah didn't create anybody for Jahannam. This verse is the answer to your uh, argument where Allah says, In illa man rahima rabbuk, except those people upon whom Allah shows his mercy. And I, hey. I pray to Allah that may Allah have mercy on you and James too. James, please, I'm very friendly, okay? <laughs> Don't mind for my compliments. <laughs> okay. Dr. Okay. Okay. did Allah, can I ask you some uh, very quick, brief questions? No, no, did let Allah... me finish this point. Oh, uh, sure. Go ahead. Please. I'll give you enough time. I told even James, that if you need more minutes, you can take my minutes. I'm that generous, you know, because big guy Thank you. with 22 Thank you. stones, I have got enough enough heart to take you. Thank because you. Because what you have done, I don't want to discuss that, but still I say that I ignore that. And that Thank is, you. it's all right, no problem. Allah has created them for that purpose. That means Allah created them to worship him and to bestow his mercy upon him. And also Allah has declared his declaration that there will be people who will be of this kind and there will be people of other kind. Then Allah confirms those people who were followers of Satan. Definitely amongst those who will follow the Satan and go away from Allah's mercy, they will go into the Jahannam. Okay, this is one answer. Now I want you to reply to this if you can. Okay, sure. Uh, I want to ask you very quick questions, Dr. Abdul Majid. Uh, did Allah create everything, yes or not? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, did Allah design everything, yes or no? Yes. Did Allah decree everything before he created it, yes or no? Yes. And so, I can give you all the verses to prove that. Fantastic. So, uh, according to the Islamic belief and according to you, Allah created everything, Allah designed everything, and Allah decreed everything. One, one final question is, is anything outside of Allah's creation and decree? No. Okay, so nothing is outside of Allah's creation and decree. But Allah wants us to believe in him and he created us just to believe in him. So let's get this straight. Allah creates everything that happens. Allah designs everything. Allah decrees everything. And nothing is designed, created and decreed outside of what Allah has designed, created and decreed. And yet Allah creates uh, humans like me with capabilities supposedly and the responsibility to believe. But he creates my mind, my environment, my personality and everything in such a way that I will eventually not be convinced by Islam, that I will disbelieve and that I will therefore make the wrong choice of disbelief and go to hell. Now, the choice of disbelieving and going to hell, who decreed that? Did it, was it my decree or was it Allah's decree? Okay, okay, I'm coming. Uh, do you understand the difference between script and transcript? Yes, but I don't, we already established creation, design and decree and nothing is outside of that. So yeah, but wh what is it? Is it transcript or a script? That Allah, what has Allah has decreed? Oh, both, both actually, yeah. Oh, how, how can, hey, can you answer? Can you answer, uh, answer? Can you answer my question? When I, I will, choose, I will, I will when answer, I choose disbelief, is that answer. my decree or is it Allah's decree? This, okay. Is that my okay. creation or Allah's creation? Okay. Uh, do you have the same knowledge of Allah? Go ahead and explain it to me. I don't know. You no. So tell me. You 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 read the. Well, you know what Allah has disc dis dis described for you or decreed for you. I mean, do I know, know that Allah it is. Huh? I know I I don't know what Allah is decreed for me. I know that according to Islam, Allah designs and creates and decrees everything that will happen before it happens. Okay, so let's and Allah let's, guides let's, and misguides whom He wills, and no one can believe on by His decree. Let's agree to certain points. Now you said that Allah has decreed everything. Allah mm -hmm. has created everything. Allah has designed everything. And okay, and you going to the Jahannam? Now you are you are blaming that to Allah. Do you know that Allah has also told you? Allah has also told you that if you do this, then this is your end. And if you don't do this, then this is your end. Do you I never, that? I never said the Quran is consistent. I'm asking, <laughs> I, no, I'm no, asking no, no. you. I'm not saying about Quran. No, come on, stick to the point. We are talking about the decree of Allah. Yeah. Okay. Allah has decreed everything. Do you know what Allah has decreed for you? 
I can't know what Allah has decreed for me because I don't believe Allah is real. So, yeah. So that means now going, you are choosing whatever you are choosing is your choice because you don't know what Allah has decreed or not. For me, if you ask me, if you ask me, do you believe in Allah? I'll say, yes, I believe in Allah. Do you believe in decree? the decree that Allah has made, a script or a transcript, which you are saying both are same, which I can say even James will correct you. It's not same. Transcript. No, I say within the context of Islam, it's the same. No, 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 no. Dr. Abdul Majid, did you choose, did you decree that you would believe in Islam or did Allah decree that you would believe in Islam? What? <laughs> did you decree that you would believe in Islam or did Allah decree that you would believe in Islam? I have a reason to believe in Allah. Okay, but did, reason, but did you I decree this or did Allah Allah's decide guidance. this? Huh? I have a reason to follow Allah's guidance. I understand Why? that. I understand that. But did you decree and decide this or did Allah decree and decide this? I don't know what Allah has decreed for me, but Allah told me what to do. That's my okay. uh, argument. Okay, but I'm not blind. No, 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 no. I'm not blind having eyes. I'm not deaf having ears. And I'm not dumb having brain to understand. So my thinking is that Allah decreed something for me, but I don't know what. But okay, Allah but eventually Allah decreed it, right? So the, the point is not uh, what will eventually happen. The point is whatever happens, so did you decree it or did Allah decree it? Ridwan, you're jumping, you're going to the destination, yet you have not chosen the route. But that's what matters. Is it Allah's decree or is it your decree? What eventually happens? No, no, why are you talking about Allah now? We had, I said to you, I believe this is Allah's decree, but Allah, Allah is not saying, okay, I decreed, you know, Jahannam for Abdul Majid and Jahannam for Ridwan. Allah didn't say that. Okay, but I'm asking you, but I'm asking you, is decree a script? But I'm asking you, so let's say hypothetically that you will end up with belief and you will die as a believer. Was it then your decision and decree to believe or was it Allah's decision and decree? Rizwan, I already answered you. What is the answer? I, I, I don't hear the answer. I already answered you that whatever Allah has decreed, I have not a single doubt about it. But, but what Allah has decreed for me, and I challenge you what Allah has decreed for you, nobody, even the third party cannot say. So I, I understand say, that. I, I understand that, but you're not, so, ask, you're, so you're not answering no, 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 my no, no. question. Let's stop here. Let's stop you, here. No, you're not answer. answering my question. I want to ask you. I'm coming. If I'm hypothetically, coming. if hypothetically Sometimes, you believe, is it your decree or is it Allah's decree? It is Allah's decree, yes. Okay, fine. So it is Allah's decree. So that means uh, Allah himself decided what will happen. Allah himself decided whether you will believe or will not believe. So it is Allah himself no, who what, has made that what, choice. What did Allah decide? No, what did Allah decide? How can you say Allah decided believe or not believe? I'm not saying he You're decided. I'm about... saying I'm, I'm, I'm presenting a hypothetical. If we are talking about somebody who ends up believing, then according to the Islamic narrative, according to the Islamic belief, logically, it has to be that Allah decreed that this person would believe or Allah decided that this person would believe. If the person has any choice in that, if you decide or decree something, then that means that is outside of Allah's de decree. That makes no sense. That is incompatible with the Islamic belief. Should we base our argument on hypothetic understanding? Or yes. should we base our yes. argument based on the word evidence? No, we should, base it, we should base it on the hypothetical. That's how we are supposed to argue about this. If, if hypothetically somebody believes and dies with, this, with, with belief, then we have to uh, discuss this in order to understand the logic, whether the okay. belief was the person's decree or whether it was Allah's decree. I think okay. we no, already no, no, have no, the wait, answer. Wait, it was wait, Allah's wait, decree, wait, wait, which wait, supports my point. Are, you are confusing people, maybe I think, because you, you my, yourself, has got this uh, wrong understanding. You are saying that if I disbelieve or if I believe, is Allah has decided for me. What is the proof for that? Give me the evidence. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> I already asked you if everything is Allah's de what? creation, design, and, and okay. Well, let, I, let, I let, asked let, you, what do you know about let, Allah, let, Allah, what Allah decided let, for Let you? me ask this. Let me ask this. If I choose, okay, let's forget about that. How about this? I chose to disbelieve in Allah, right? I chose to disbelieve in Allah. Was that my decree? Was that outside of Allah's decree. It's your choice and Allah will okay. not do wrong to you. Okay, Ridwan, but was that Allah, was that outside of Allah, Allah's decree? Was it my decree alone? Ridwan, if Allah want to punish me now, Allah can punish me. If Allah wants to send mercy to me, he can do that. 
I, for you, for see you the, to, no, no, listen, listen. That's my point. But you're not answering yeah. my question. That's the issue. Was I'm it my decree question. or not? Yeah. So wh why you chose that? Why you chose to be of that? It doesn't why matter why I chose it. Choice? It doesn't matter why I chose it. I'm asking you, was it my why decree? Does it no, no, because why it doesn't matter? If it doesn't matter you for what you're choosing, then you, it, shouldn't, doesn't it shouldn't even matter you to question Allah in the first place. Dr. Abdul, you're not answering my question. I'm uh, answering your question. I'm saying what, that. Was it, was it my decree? Was it my no, no, decree no, no. to disbelieve said... outside of Allah's decree? Was it my decree? No, no, it's, not. it's not. So, okay, it is Allah's decree. So everything is Allah's decree. That means even if yes. I have a final choice to disbelieve and go to hell, then that was decided by Allah beforehand. It wasn't decided why, by why me. Because choice? if I, it doesn't matter why. why? Are you, it, are you it doesn't matter. to choose your final choice? No, it doesn't matter why. That's not the point, Dr. Dr. Majid. No, 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 no matter no. what it is, even if it's out of ignorance, if I eventually no, 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 choose no, no, no. disbelief, you then that means no, that no, was no, decided no, by no, Allah no, himself no, at the very beginning so before I made the choice. Gentlemen, just okay. because it's yes, getting yes, heated, please, and ahead. I know that you guys are both passionate, and that's what we appreciate because there's nothing worse than two debaters that lack passion, but you guys definitely have an abundance of passion. I just want to be sure that we get to hear from each of you plenty so that as the guests want to hear from you guys so that there's not too much interrupting. Go ahead. I think, no, no, uh, no. Dr. Uh, Abdul, Ridwan, you're going to respond. Yes, uh, Ridwan, uh, my question is that you are choosing good or you're choosing bad, and then you're blaming Allah. <laughs> you and at the same time you're saying you don't know you're saying at the same time you don't know whatever you're saying to me about allah i said yes but you are not letting me complete this you are let, go, let go me ahead. complete it. go ahead complete it i believed in what allah has decreed and it is a decree is not the script it's a transcript remember that you have to understand this is there is a big difference between script and transcript which you have to uh, you know, understand, I'm not here to educate you. You are much knowledgeable than me, I admit, in the front of the audience here. Okay, second thing. Second thing, Allah has designed, uh, designed, Allah has decreed, Allah has decided, and Allah is saying that these people will go to Jahannam due to X, Y, Z reason, and that reasons are told. A person will go to Jannah due to X, Y reason, and that reasons are told. Now, the reasons are told. And my question was that I don't know where I will go, but I was told that take this route or that route where you will reach to your destination. That's simple for me to understand. But you are, you're just reaching to the destination by your own choice. And then you are saying, you know, this is what Allah has given to me. No, Allah gave you two choices and you are finally choosing one. So why are you blaming Allah for that? And plus you don't know what Allah chose for you. Okay, uh, thank you so much for that. Um, again, I think it doesn't answer the point at all. Uh, here is the issue. You. you say Allah uh, decrees everything and you believe in that fully and he creates and decrees everything. Thank you, by the way. And uh, Allah decrees the reasons. Uh, Allah gives us reasons. Uh, eventually, based on Allah's creation and decree, we come to a certain choice that we make between belief and disbelief. Allah created those choices. And uh, the problem is, if Allah created, designed and decreed everything then Allah created me just the way I am Allah designed my brain and my mind and all my functions and capabilities and my environment everything that influences me and finally uh, even if we come to those two choices in the end if I make the choice to believe or if I make the choice to disbelieve the eventual choice is also Allah's decree. If I truly have a choice, if I truly can choose independently between belief and disbelief, then that means I am making a choice that is outside of Allah's decree, outside of Allah's creation, outside of Allah's design. If I make a choice and if Allah created everything, then that means he must have also created my, cho my choice to make that choice. Allah must have decreed long before it happens, that I would make that choice. Whether it is the right choice or the wrong choice, it is Allah's decree. Can we agree on this? If I make a choice independently from Allah's decree, then that means I acted outside of Allah's creation and outside of Allah's decree, which would be in contradiction Allah with everything you, that you Allah believe. Gave you, Allah gave you the choice. Allah gave you the choice. I can quote you number of verses if you want to hear that, because you can't prove me that Allah decreed Jahannam for you for no reason. I told you that, for example, you kill somebody and you say to the judge, I finally chose that. 
You can't punish me for that. That's my choice. You can't ask the judge to say, why are you punishing me? Because I, I just, this was my final choice. The difference no, is that the, the judge, judge is not is almighty there. and he didn't create me at my choice. Ah, there you are. There you are. So that's why you are. The judge will say, no, my dear Ridwan, my Habibi Ridwan, a killing person, you know, it's a crime. And killing a life, you have to uh, spend time in the prison. That is already told by the law. So law, that's what I'm saying. Allah has sent the law. Allah has sent the law and Allah has already told you that okay. if you abide by that law and then you do this and now the same thing. If somebody is being raped and then the person, the rapist go to the jail, a prison uh, judge, he says, oh, it's my choice. You know, something happened to me. <laughs> I take something, you know, marijuana and I looked at this naked woman and said, it's her choice, her, my choice. And we did that. So please don't punish me. No, no, that's not, you can't say that. And then, <laughs> then the judge will say, no. A woman can walk anywhere she likes, but you are you okay, have to okay. it. So I, I want to conclude the topic because I don't think we will get anywhere with this, but uh, I appreciate the discussion, but I want to conclude it. Uh, of course, you can add to it as much as you want. We should maybe move on to the next question after that. But I want to conclude it by just saying one thing. Dr. Abdul Majid, uh, here's what I think. Uh, if I die and I go and stand before Allah and Allah judges me, and tells me and asks me why I disbelieved, or he judges me based on my disbelief, I will say to Allah, hey, uh, don't you know, you are the almighty, all-knowing creator. Are you not aware that you created me in the very beginning and designed me exactly as I am, as the stupid, flawed, or smart, uh, great being that I am, and that you decreed long before me what exactly I would do, and you even made my final choice for me. It was your decision. If I had a final choice, and that would be outside of your decree, which would be in contradiction with the fundamentals of your whole religion. So therefore, it is your fault. But go ahead and punish me if, if that's how you function. Obviously, you are not very logical. That's what I will say to Allah when I die, and if Allah exists. That is how I want to rest my case. Okay. If you want to add anything okay. to it, do please do. Let's it? move on to the next do. issue then. No, uh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me conclude myself. Come on, give no, me yeah, the, No, no, the, I'm, the I'm saying do it. Man. I'm saying do it. Go ahead. Okay. No. <laughs> so, uh, people of your kind, I'm saying I'm not, I do never wish bad for you, and I always even taken the critics of my own people to talk about you. When I address in my few videos, I addressed you and David Wood as brother, and they told me, how I can you call that. somebody as a brother? Yeah, somebody who's urinating on the Quran and kicking the Quran. I said, no, that's their choice. I don't mind. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm they are my human brothers. I will address them as human brothers. I don't want to disrespect them. So then they, they even told me that you, you're gonna call somebody as your brother who abuses your mother and your daughter. I said, forget. It. That's their choice. So what I'm saying now to you, answer your question. First of all. First of all, there will not be any communication between you and Allah. I can certainly say that from the Quran when you believe like that. Okay, so you have no way to blame Allah. But I have the answer for your question. It is, uh, let me take you to the one surah, which is 67, please, if you have the Quran. Yeah. 67. Yeah. Chapter 67. And I will read it to you. And inshallah, you will know this is the answer for your question to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمِ This is verse 6. That for those people who have disbelieved, okay, which I'm not saying you, but if you are saying, if you want to die like that, it's up to you, your choice. Those people who disbelieved in their Lord, they will have the punishment in the Jahannam, وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And it is the worst indeed their destination. Then, when they are cast therein, they will hear the terrible drawing in uh, of its breath uh, uh, as it blazes forth. It almost burst up with fury. Every time a group is cast therein, it, its keeper will ask. Okay, so you will not gonna ask Allah. Allah will not give you opportunity to ask him. You, if you are like dying like this, Rizwan, I wish good for you. I wish best for you, inshallah. Dr. Al Majid, I think we should we should conclude this. We, should, we are going on that forever. No, 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 We're no, wasting no, no, a lot of time. No, no, no. This is, I'm, time. 
Uh, very I nice words, you, very nice words, but I'm not impressed want. by it. <laughs> I don't think no, it no, makes no, sense. The but... answer is coming. Answer sure, is go ahead. Coming. If, you, go if, ahead. You, if you want to discuss with me, I told you I'm an academic and I want to discuss point by point. Bringing okay. all the thousand verses and one, not even one is understood, then that's not point. You can bring the whole Quran. It has got 6,000 verses plus. Okay, then it says, then it says, its keeper will ask, did you, uh, did no warner come to you? So Allah has sent the warner to you. Okay. So no, no, it hasn't you, come to me. You can't say that this is, Alu, yeah, yeah. I, hasn't, I came to has you not now. come to me. I'm sorry. I'm a warner to you. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm warning you. You're Alu a prophet. Indeed. Yes, I'm a warner to you, my brother. My brother, I'll tell you, I'm a warner to you. Listen to these verses and then you can say whatever you like. Indeed, the warner came to us. Abdul Majid came to Ridwan, and Ridwan was warned. But Ridwan said, Abdul Majid, you are a liar because I don't believe in what you believe in Allah. I, I wouldn't say that. Allah. Yeah, okay. And I say, Allah has not revealed anything because Allah is false. In you people are in the biggest loss and biggest, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a lost world. And they, you will say, and people of your kind, subhanAllah, I don't wish anything bad for you, but people will say, Allah, if we would have, yes, we have, if we would have uh, listened to them, that's the reason why Allah gave you the ears and you became deaf. So Allah gave you the ears and you listen to it and Allah gave you the brain to understand you understood now you are saying in the gray in the hell you are saying if I would have heard if I would have understood I would not be in this place they have admitted their uh, sin and their mistakes so they should be put in the hell fire so Dr. That's Majid. The answer. Uh, we can move on. Thank you. I, I appreciate your knowledge. I respect your knowledge and uh, thank you so much for your nice words uh, the issue is you may consider yourself a warner. You I might think you, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> I you. you might think that you you might think that you have uh, warned me appropriately. Unfortunately, it's not you. It is the today Quran. It's, it's not. It's not impressive today enough. Today when you sleep, you'll get nightmare. No, it's unfortunately it's not impressive. I'm not moved by it. I'm not impressed by it. I'm not intimidated by it because to me it just seems illogical. It doesn't make sense. And I'm not saying that you are illogical. I'm not saying that you are a liar. That's not what I'm saying at all. Please don't don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that the source no, no, material, like the Quran, no, no, no. is unfortunately not not good enough, and I don't see the logic in it. I mean. But but we can move on from that. I think we could discuss about this forever. But um, yeah, okay. the, the whole issue about uh, Muhammad being a false prophet and according to you, a true prophet who has made uh, prophecies and according to me has made false prophecies. Is there uh, anything that you want to uh, add to that? For example, the whole question about uh, when people came and asked about the last hour, how was it in Arabic? Uh, the Kumus, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, whatever is mentioned. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's exactly what's, what's mentioned there. So the, the 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 last hour, within context, in other hadiths, explicitly within the with the same words referring to the day of judgment. People ask him ask him when the last hour will come, and he keeps quiet for a while. Then he looks at a young boy in his presence and says, "If this boy lives, he will not grow very old until the last hour will come to you." That's what he says in Sahih Muslim, uh, book fifty four. Uh, hadith 172 and also in many other related hadiths. This is to me and to many people on a plain reading a false prophecy. Okay, Ridwan, Ridwan, uh, do you want to discuss about this? And if I if I say something about this hadith, uh, I'm not convincing. I always in my uh, Juma khutbahs I say to the people, even the Christian scholars, they attend my Juma khutbah, they come before the Adhan and they attend my Juma khutbah. I tell them I'm not convincing you guys. I'm convey, conveying what I believe. Okay, sure. Okay? No, that's, that's, so, that's fair. Now, let me tell you, you are quoting this hadith, which is, I'll tell you this hadith, and now I'll take you to the hadith. Now, let's understand. You are uh, pulling me to a right field. You know, you, about are, about uh, a, must, you must have a been. minute left. I'll give you the last word, Dr. Abdul. And yeah. so maybe if you can wrap it up in maybe a minute to two minutes at the most oh. in answering Apostate Prophet's question, and then we have to go jump into the Q&A. Okay, this, this, this hadith is not from one book. I'll tell you, this hadith is found in different books of a hadith. And this book, I'll tell you, I'll quote you the narrations. And this hadith is not talking about the day of judgment. It's talking about the death of the people. 
is talking no. about the death of the people and we as Muslim, traditional understanding of our scholars and our religion, that a person when he dies, that's his Qiyamah starts. And this is what Rasul was referring. And you see the last part of Anas in the same quotation of yours. And that Anas said that this young boy was of our age during those days. So Ridwan, you are talking about the Day of Judgment. And I can give you the credit for that because you don't have the deep understanding of this ahadith. And you only pick up one hadith and you talk. And this no, is there, there are many. This is just one of them. And this is about the Day of Judgment. They, they clearly ask about the Day of Judgment. It's it's uh, no, 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 impossible no, 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 that no. he would then reply Look, uh, with What we've got to do is death. I've got to give, I can give you 30 no, no, seconds, Ridwan, this is Abdul, to, this to wrap up. talks about the death of the person. It, it doesn't. It's and clearly the asked about the Day death. of Judgment. It's clearly asked about the last hour explicitly with the yeah, same words that hadith, many other... In these, in these words, in these words, but the same hadith is found in 12 different places. And then Must. we can have a separate discussion. But this is your interpretation. The, the text clearly talks about the last hour. It is true. We could potentially have a, an additional yeah, yeah, no, no problem, gents. No we problem. I answered. I answered. And I think we, we can move on to the Q&A. It's we, fine. We have so many questions that I do want to jump into the Q&A. And it is absolutely true. We could do a part two of this discussion as it could be ongoing. I love it. I love so it. We, uh, I love we, it. We can definitely appreciate both of our guests. I want to remind you folks, a couple of things. One, we appreciate our guests. Please attack the arguments instead of the person in the live chat or the comments afterwards, as well as both of our guests are linked in the description and very excited that this is the first of our two debates today. We will have another one that you can see at the bottom right of your screen. Did dinosaurs exist with humans? That's going to be tonight. You don't want to miss it. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And then this one coming in from, thanks for your question. You to have heck you, thank you very much. Says if Allah knows all things, does he know what it feels like <clears throat> to be have human experiences? Is, that a... is the question? They, they're asking if Allah is all knowing, does Allah know what it feels like to be human? It's for you, I believe, Dr. Abdul Okay, okay, definitely. If I am an electrician, do I have to know how the shock, electric shock feels like? Gotcha. <laughs> and then this question coming in from Zagros Ozkan, more of a comment says, gentlemen, present your best arguments without resorting to logical fallacies and be honest, we are watching. So got a fan Thank out you. there, you could say, uh, in terms of cordial discussion, which I think this has been cordial. You guys have yeah. been respectful and we appreciate nice. that. And then <laughs> this question coming in, we're gonna try our best folks to ask questions one to the other so that it's alternating. Sometimes we don't have enough questions to do that because sometimes we have a disproportionately large amount for one side, but we're gonna at least do our best. So this one coming in for me, apostate James, prophet. I want to comb my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Free your mind says apostate is safe inset, namely <clears throat> mother sleeping with their son. I think they mean incest. Is that wrong? And don't say because you feel it is wrong. Like, why is it wrong other than that you feel like it's wrong in your gut? Why do I think it is wrong? Wait, what, what was the question? A mother having what? Yeah, so they say for incest, if a mother yes. has sexual relations with her son, yeah. why do you get, what reason do you have for saying that it's wrong other than that it kind of feels wrong in your gut? Well, it's a very unrelated and complicated question that needs to be further elaboration, but uh, you would have to ask me what I mean by wrong. I would consider it, uh, of course, it is detestable, it is disgusting, but that's not the question. Uh, I would think it would be uh, stupid and heavily dysfunctional because it would potentially lead to uh, a very destructive, horrible outcome of deformed humans deformed offspring it would also generally lead to you know societal decline in terms of i don't know in, incest is something that has been proven by scientific means by our general understanding long ago to be something that is extremely detrimental to the human health and it is it is it is just it is it is terrible to cause this for another human being because we have the sense of empathy and compassion it is terrible to cause it upon yourself why cause more suffering suffering is objectively uh, you know wrong in so many different civilizations for a reason because it's not it's it's contrary to our desire to our most natural desire to flourish and to be well i mean that's what that would be my answer to it and zagros ozkan says 
Dr. Abdul, do you think that your arguments are circular reasoning? Because I think they are. But what do you think, Dr. Abdul? My guess is you disagree. No, what's the question? They had said, do you think that your arguments are using circular reasoning? In other words, assuming what the, they are trying to prove. And they say, because they think that, they're, that your arguments are. No, no, I'm not here. I'm honestly speaking, James, to you and to the Rizwan and also the audience. I'm not here to convince anybody. This is what my understanding of the Islam that I'm presenting. And this is my understanding of Allah, Muhammad and his uh, Quran. And at the same time, if you would have, if this uh, uh, question, if you would have asked me what Islam says about incest and having sex with the mother, I could have straightforward given the ruling what Islam says about it. But since it was not asked me, so I won't say, but as far as my point is here, I'm always, as I said, my heart is opened. Even if you total, you can, Ridwan can say, Dr. Majid, your argument is not convincing me. That's fine, alhamdulillah, I still love him. And I told him in the Turkish language, we call young boys as son. So I respect him because I'm much older than him. And alhamdulillah, I can expect anything that comes from, you know, younger boys like him, mashallah. Good, keep it. Thank up. you. You got it. And thank you very much for your question. DT asks, apostate prophet, can you explain why Islamic slavery is historically justified, as you said in your debate with Daniel? Um, I said before in my own video long before, maybe not long before, but before in my, before my debate with Daniel, I said that uh, I cannot judge slavery in history uh, or people, slaveholders in history as evil or as wrong. That would be pointless because they were just doing something that was functional and justifiable within their own context and their own environment. I know this is a loaded question, but it doesn't really work that way, guys. Uh, <laughs> I would only I would only judge. Let me, let me I didn't explain why, why, why I would say that. I would say that uh, I would consider slavery historically justifiable because slavery was used as a means by certain people to contain their opponents and enemies and prevent them from, uh, you know, fr from attacking again and, and, and humiliating and destroying you and making you go extinct. So that was a means why it was justifiable in the past. I wouldn't say it is justifiable today anymore today. And w while Islam advocates for uh, timeless slavery, also in our time, as Daniel Kikichu has argued, I would say Islam is thereby wrong because it is not justifiable today. We have better this means. One, coming in from Apollos says he, Dr. Mahid, is arguing at the false presuppositional analogy for general theism, but doesn't he realize that this is not an argument for Islam, but rather general theism, monotheism? What are your thoughts, Dr. Abdul? See, I, I believe that Allah is the only God and there is no other God. And I gave so many reasons and there are so many verses which I can quote and explain uh, explicitly from our sources, proving that Allah is the one who is the final creator and nobody and Allah is like independent by itself. And if the even Dr. Craig, who is the authority in Christianity, he has gone into the philosophy of uh, Imam Ghazali, who is our Imam. He has taken his understanding of existence of God. And that is he refers to Allah for us and he's referring to Trinity God for them, for them. So this is what I believe that in Islam, it is only one God. In Hinduism also, there is only one God. This is a super God and they have got different names of other gods as well. So they have uh, subordinate gods, but they believe in one God. Hinduism believes in that. Christianity believes in one God. Judaism believes in one God. Islam believes in one God. But Islam is the only religion that defines the proper definition of what one God is. Clearly from, you know, clear distinction between uh, Allah as a creator and others, other things are Allah's creation. And as Rizwan said, did Allah create everything? I said, yes. Allah says in the Quran that Allah is the creator of everything. You got it. And thank you very much for this question from DT for apostate prophet says, you said that Christianity and Judaism are beautiful. What do you think of the verse Deuteronomy 13, six through 10 that calls for punishing apostates? 
very nice related questions here. Um, I don't remember saying that Judaism is beautiful. I would remember saying that I appreciate its cultural value. I would also say that I find Zoroastrianism beautiful, although it has very uh, terrible aspects. Uh, if, 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 if Islam was uh, back in history somewhere, I would also find certain aspects of, of Islam beautiful because of its cultural preservation. I have I might have personally said that I find um, Christianity beautiful sarcastically or that I might have referred to uh, you know being part of the Christian faith as beautiful uh, but the certain law cited in Deuteronomy is not a law that applies with to Christianity that is an Old Testament law by uh, by the Christian theology but yeah I don't believe in religions I reject them I don't think they are functional I don't think they are reasonable but the question is again completely uh, missing the point. This one coming in from Ra, Nick. Ra Badenis says, doesn't Surah 754 contradict 41, 9 through 12? Was the earth created in six days, as one passage would say, or two or four days, as another passage would say? Okay, the, this is again a misunderstanding because there are two verses which the, the last reference, what the reference did you give, please? Yep, the last, the last one reference? was Surah 41, 9 through 12. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's very simple. And uh, there are two verses. One speaks about the whole creation of the earth and the things in it for four days, in four days. That's the first verse. Okay. This is what Then it says, Wajala fiha rawasiya min. All this is, I'll tell you how it is, because it is a problem with the people in calculation and they are, talk, they are talking about, you know, maths here and they're trying to teach Muslim scholars what is maths, what is the, you know, two, four, four and two, two and two, then again, uh, two, four and two, they say these are eight. But these are in two different verses. It's not in one verse, eight number is not there. And a calculation of eight is not there in two verses, uh, one verse. So you can't, in Arabic grammar, even in Arabic grammar, you can't take the whole calculation based on two different verses. Definitely, the first verse speaks about four days. And those four days is actually the creation of the earth and things within earth. And two days of the heavens. That's very clear. And that is very clear from the Arabic text if the people understand Arabic. And that's why in, in the UK, when I used to have a debate with the Christian scholars, and I used to always discuss with them from Bible. But when once they raised the question to you, me from the Quran, and I said to them, okay, you must be having in Luton, here I live in Luton. I said that if you have a Christian scholar who is Arab from his actual language, and he can, t t you know, read to me this Arabic and explain to me how he understands this. And I'll discuss with him. And you wallahi, I swear upon Allah, if I, I believe in Allah, maybe Rizwan will laugh at me by uh, what, what Allah is swearing oh, upon. No. I respect <laughs> it. So I say that I, I, without boasting, I educated that Arab. And I said to him, look, this is one verse speaks about four days. And the other verse speaks about two days. And those four days are not Two, uh, two, four, and two. It's four okay. days about the whole construction of the earth. Earth is different than the heavens. So earth took four days and heaven took two days. So it's totally six days. It's not contradicting from the verse seven, uh, chapter seven. You got it. Thank you very much. And want to let you know, folks, we did a poll earlier, and I'm sharing this not just for trivial reasons, but we did a poll while there were a thousand live viewers, and we have 42% of the audience being atheist, 20% being Christian, other 19% and surprisingly Muslim is actually 17%, the smallest. And so it is by about two and a half times difference in terms of how many more atheists there are than Muslims. So we do have way more atheist questions, namely for Dr. Abdul. And so just want to let you know, we're trying to have them be balanced. But as far as I can see, we've run out of questions for apostate prophet. We have lots more for Dr. Abdul. So I want to let you know about that. We're going to try to move through these as fast as possible because we also have limited time and a lot of questions. But this one coming up. I'll just stop. leave then. Or... This one just... from, <laughs> from Stop Scamming Man says, Hello, Dr. Mahid. In your estimation, if an ideal caliphate forms in the future, 
what should happen if an adult openly comes out as an apostate but claims to have secretly left when they were a child? I will just say to them, good luck and go to a place where your life is saved. Don't stay in the place where the, you will be ex executed. I you even told in one of, my, one of my videos to Ridwan, and I even said to uh, Dr. David, that if you think that apostasy will, you know, result to your death, come to my house. I will, you know, give you protection. And if, if, you, if somebody wants your life, I'll give my life to protect them. And that's, I said in my video, it's there. So it's a wrong concept that, you know, apostate should be killed. No, there's no, no authentic narration. I have a speech on that. I've given the evidence to that. And there are so many research articles from the Muslim scholars, authorities who have proven that the apostate can only be executed by Muslim authority, which is no, nowhere ex existing. It will be executed only if he becomes a threat to other Muslims, other Muslims, like he is coming up with the army to fight them, or he comes as the Harib. Can, not as normal person must, like can, can i ask you uh, can i ask I, a follow-up question to clarify I that to, i i just want to the challenge here is like we can do these really seldomly and, and then i'd obviously have to give a, dr abdul a chance to respond with the last word because the question is for him uh, okay, but can I, I, if we can do these as seldom as possible because we have a lot okay no, you th th this one this one is very this one is very crucial uh the thing is the question was uh in your ideal islamic state so the islamic state that you would agree in uh, agree with uh that was the question so what would uh happen to people according to you to apostates and what, one more thing that i want to add is that uh according to the scholarly consensus in islam and according to the accepted uh books of islamic jurisprudence it is an agreed matter that if somebody openly leaves islam then he is to be executed uh, if he does not repent uh, and doesn't come back to Islam. So what would you say to that? No, no, no. Ridwan, again, again, in Islam, we have got lots of opinions, lots of opinions. And, you know, I can say that if you, if you uh, see the research articles written by the recent scholars on this subject, Alhamdulillah, I'm not naive and I'm not against my Khilafah. I said, yes, Muslims should be having Khilafah and they will be all in peace. And the Jews will be living peacefully. Christians will be living peacefully. And the non-Muslims also will be living peacefully. At the same time, I have got three evidences, which I don't, can't quote all of them, but I'm saying that there was a man who was uh, writing the Wahi, the revelation uh, revealed to Rasulullah and this man was a writer, he was a scriber, everything, and he went back to Christianity and he left. Rasulullah didn't chase him, so he didn't kill him. This is one thing. Second thing, the last in incident should be considered into consideration, and that's the act of the Prophet himself. When Makkah was conquered, there was a man who was also writing the revelations of Rasulullah He left and he went to Makkah, and he was taking the protection from people in Makkah, and when Prophet conquered Makkah, he went there and he said this man should be punished and should be killed. But Uthman stood up and he said he's my relative and I want you to spare his life. And Prophet didn't say, come on Uthman, what you're saying? This is my law. Somebody is apostated, should be chopped. You know, this man should be chopped. No, he didn't say. He said, if you are taking his custody, then he's freed. And later on, during the time of the Caliph of Omar, he again became Muslim and he repented for what he has done. So nice. got it. in nice. Islam, we have this evidence that apostates should it. not be killed. Okay. And Rizwan, you are most welcome to my house. We have, I just <laughs> want to you. remind you guys, we have so many questions that I, I have to ask if you guys are able to keep your answers as succinct as possible. Otherwise, the audience is, uh, will be disappointed that their question didn't get read. Azri, thank you very much, says, Dr. Abdul, do you believe in heaven, hell, the fire, that the fire of hell has a literal meaning instead of it being a metaphor? I don't believe in, in a metaphorical way. I believe it in exactly that way. And that's my strong faith. I know there are Muslim who so-called, uh, you know, scholars and muftis, and they don't, they consider it just to make people, English people happy to, you know, say that there's no hell, no heaven. It's a met metaphorical, you know, way. No, I take it as a literal, yes. You got it. And thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Rajat. Ranjian says, as doctor said in his opening statement that Prophet only married widow or, or divorced, then why did he marry Zainba, Zainab, who is his so-called son's wife? No, no, no. So-called son's wife is different than the so-called real son. 
Okay, that is adoption, adopted son in Islam. Uh, that's that's what Ridwan has said. Islam has made very clear that having sex with the mother is a far thing for a son to ever think. Forget about it. Islam even teaches in chapter four, verse twenty-two. Islam teaches that even the mother-in-law, even the mother-in-law, should be respected as mother, and even the wife has been divorced. This man has no right to have sex with that mother-in-law, even if he has divorced his wife. This is it. very and clear in Islam. So even when you talk about the adopted son, daughter, it's the same ruling that if a person, if my wife, you know, uh, if if my son has married, uh, you know, my biological son, and even if he has divorced her, that woman will still be considered as my daughter. I will never be allowed to marry her. So there's no question about it. Adopt adoption. Is not considered as biological relationship, so that's a wrong, you know, uh, accusation about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marrying him. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. You got it. And then uh, thank you very much for this question coming in from D B K six nine. Kind of for you, Apostle Prophet. They are uh, they're criticizing the Christians that support you. They say these quote unquote Christians supporting an atheist is eye opening. Apostle Prophet, are you? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, you? I think it's I think it's completely understandable that I am uh, that I get the friendship and the support of uh, atheists, Christians, Jews, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, ex-Muslims of all sorts and kinds. That doesn't say anything about uh, you know their hypocrisy or their ulterior motives or whether Islam is good. It just shows us that many people have a problem with Islam because of the way Islam is, because Islamic sources explicitly uh, insult and dehumanize all other groups of people very clearly over and over again. So if we are described in the very fundamental scripture of Islam as uh, as, as the lowest creatures and you know as horrible beings, then it's it's no surprise that people will come together against this belief. I also invite Muslims to come together with me and to, uh, you know, to, to join me in a friendly way. Unfortunately, that's very rare. You got it. And not a chum. Thanks for your question says, yes. Dr. Abdul, could Allah still be God and Muhammad be his prophet, even if the Quran didn't exist? Okay, alhamdulillah, that's, that's again irrelevant question because Allah SWT has said in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 213, وَاحدة فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ That Allah SWT has created the mankind to worship and then when the man stepped on the face of the earth, Allah has sent the messengers, Allah has sent the prophets to warn them, which I already warned uh, uh, Ridwan, today he'll be having nightmare. So uh, they will. Uh, uh, they came with the warning and they came with the great glad tidings and even the books were sent to them. So why the Quran is sent? Even, even if the Quran is not there, but the messengers would be there and Prophet would have been messenger. But the thing is, I want to add one more point for uh, Ridwan over here. Ridwan is, he, in his latest video, he said that uh, when the question was asked, if no Islam, then, then what's then? So in that, if Ridwan did say that I am poor atheist now. He said that I'm poor atheist. I'm not talking about atheism or theism or something like that. Then he said that I prefer, I prefer that a person should be, uh, you know, Buddhist, which he said, I don't want to be Buddhist. Then he gave the second priority to Christianity and Judaism. This is how he is giving the choices to the people, but never ever he said that leave Christianity, stay away from Christianity, stay away from Judaism, but always he says, and I like that slogan, that stay away from Islam. I would always say, that's that, nice. Alhamdulillah, if you want to stay away from Islam, stay away. <laughs> we don't need. That would be a little bit. I, I just, I just want to add five seconds, James, please. Five, five seconds. Uh, I would think that's a misrepresentation because what I actually said was that I personally prefer to be a free thinker, independent from all of this. And there's nothing with that as well. I would suggest hedonism if, I, if it's okay with you. But these are certain uh, suggestions that I have. That's what I said. But this yeah, one coming in you. from. Thanks, Kang, Yasuk, and Colossians 2.9 for your super stickers, as well as Sanjay Shahi says, Hey, Apostle Prophet, I respect you for your knowledge and dedication. I have a feeling they're, they're uh, a Muslim so who's saying that. So that's kind. And then stop scamming man says, hello, Dr. Mahid, in your estimation, if an ideal if an ideal caliphate forms in the future, should the hijab be compulsory among Muslim women? 
Is question to me? Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Why you are talking about the caliphate or khilafah? Allah has already told the women to cover their bodies. Yes, it's not like, you know, uh, the people are showing the advertisement of the beach and they are giving, you know, a proper suit for the men and nothing to the women. So this is how they are treating their women, which our Islam does not. Our Islam gives the, Allah has given them the command. So if a person is a true believer and it's not the matter of the man, it's not the matter of the Khalifa, it's the matter of a Muslim woman. If she is a believer and she believes in the Quran and she believes that this command is from Allah, then she should cover herself the way Allah has told. So told. It's not, I'm not talking about niqab, I'm talking about hijab. Yes, Quran did say that and this is Allah's command. Whether Khilafah is there or not, and that has to be understood by the woman, even the Western women who are converting to Islam, they know that last time, I know, I don't want to go into detail of that, that there was a, a, a basketball or a, a, a match team, huh? volleyball match, and the women were refused to wear uh, underwears. And they were forced by the uh, team members to wear the uh, underwears. Otherwise, the women were saying, we will not wear underwears, we'll wear shorts. And the, the men were saying, no, you are not allowed to wear shorts because your performance will be bad. And they were fine for that. So that is their culture, their life. And the women are happy with that. That's fine. We Muslims, we are not forcing our women. We are only saying that if you are sincere Muslim, then follow Allah's command. Don't follow your husband's command. Don't follow your father's command. Don't follow your Khalifa's command. You follow Allah's command if you see, think that you are sincere. If you are not, then good luck. Mashallah, we don't care. You got it. And thank you very much. Hogtown Biker for your super sticker as well as M. Warren says apostate prophet, or they said from apostate prophet's 12 minute opening statement, Dr. Abdul, did you address his points? I told you that he's one point I can give a whole lecture to make him understand. And that's why we just stood up uh, about the creed. And I said that I believe in the creed. I believe everything is destined. And I know Allah knows who will go where. But we don't know. But Allah did tell us that, okay, he sent the books. I read the verse from Surah Al-Baqarah just now that Allah sent us to live in this world. And he told us to worship. He sent the prophets. He sent the messengers. And he also told us that follow the book. So if we don't, then we will be crying in the hell, as I quoted from verse, uh, chapter 67, and uh, verses 6 and 7 and 8. And I gave the answer to Ridwan, and that's what I'm saying. If he reads the, those verses again, he'll definitely won't sleep today. He will take sleeping pills. I hope so. Yeah. Apollo <laughs> thinks your question. Apollo says, uh, uh, apostate prophet went to an accredited college and said, Dr. Abdul, would you consider where you got your education to be a Muslim-biased school? You can challenge me for my education. I can challenge even Muslim scholars if they doubt my education. I'm here to defend my education. I believe in Quran. I know Quran in and out. I have learned the Quran page to page, cover to cover, in Arabic, in Tafsir. And I know Usul al-Hadith, Usul al-Tafsir, Usul al-Fiqh. Alhamdulillah, anybody wants to challenge me of my credibility, I'll take it. But if somebody wants to correct me my mistake, I will kiss his forehead. No problem. If Rizwan says, Dr. Majid, you made this mistake. And if I know it is my mistake, I will kiss his forehead and I will not show that, no, I'm right, though I'm wrong. So I am ready, but somebody has to be of my caliber too. I will come to the UK so you can kiss my forehead. Yeah. Next up, no, thank you but very you much. have not corrected me yet. <laughs> this one coming in from <laughs> MB Khan says, what's the point of reading a Chinese book if you don't understand Chinese? And they're saying that Dr. Abdul used, used an argument analogous to this. Don't, I'm saying if you want to be a Muslim, you should know Quran and you should know the Quran, how you read. Quran is not just a book of translation. Anybody can just read like that. Quran was revealed 1400 years ago to the uncivilized Arab of that time and prophet was changing their civilization. 23 years. Now, Brother Ridwan, he wants to be an atheist. He wants to uh, throw away the law of Allah, throw away the law of Quran and Sharia. And he can compare uh, only one example. He can compare the uh, crimes which are happening in the families who are non-Muslim families, compare that number of crimes that is happening in these Muslim non-Muslim families and compare the 23 years of Prophet's life, the how many crimes took place there within the society, not even the relatives. So then that shows which, which law is 
and that law to understand that you should know language you should know the original sources if he is talking about prophet's life he brings only one issue that prophet sallam couldn't say about the uh, when is the hour coming he doesn't know the meaning of the word as-sa'a as-sa'a means the second the, the minutes we have second 60 seconds that is called sa'a period is called sa'a time is called sa'a and the qiyamah is called sa'a the death is also called sa'a in quran there are six different meanings of the word sa'a used in the quran and my brother ridwan he doesn't know that so he picks up one ayah or one hadith and then he in uh, you know put his argument on one word and then he says that this is a false prophecy i can expect from him because he he says that it is not important for a person to know arabic to know the deen or right unfortunately it, it says takum sa'a which is uh, mentioned in uh, numerous hadith the same way in the same context again and again for the last hour referring to the day of judgments unfortunately that's that's I'm, I'm not taking anything me. out of context no 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 ridwan me ridwan you invite me on your stage and we'll just talk about this hadith and then maybe, i'll take maybe. you to all this hadith which are related it and i'm i'm telling you on air you invite me i'll take you the full uh, classical understanding of that particular narration where it is found and what is the complete narration and how it is understood by the one who narrates it i'm not even i, I wish we could have we will, i wish we could have discussed that i, I, I want to give abdul the last word or dr abdul the last word because i i uh, okay okay sure yeah. we do have so many more questions okay this one coming in from ali nasar ahmad says if muhammad was sent for all times why did he marry six year old Aisha, if it's usual Arab tradition back then, but then why marry his daughter in law to break the same traditions? He has to be educated properly. If he has to understand, then he has to go back to listen. I can justify that, but because the people at that time they had no problem, the father of Aisha had no problem. Aisha, she didn't have any problem, and the Arabs at that time, nobody has ever said to him that you are pedophile and you are having a sex with the six years old girl. And people they say to you that Abdul Majid, if somebody comes, he is fifty two years old, and if he, if he wants to marry your daughter, will you allow? I'll say, I'll say yes if he is of the caliber of Prophet's character. Definitely, because I know what is marriage. Because this is what the people. It's good that you people are using the word marriage. But here in this world, day and age today, this the school teachers. I'm in education. I know school teachers are raping the young girls, and nobody raises the issues about that. Is it okay and today? Prophet, Prophet is not raping her. Prophet is Prophet did not kidnap her. Prophet did not flirt her and made her girlfriend and then took her in the party, had dates with her and slept with her for so many days and acquainted her with the sex and then he went to his father, her father and said, "Okay, now I want to marry your daughter." No, they were. Shay James, can I ask a very short? Can I ask a very short question that you can very briefly answer? If, very, very briefly. If you're, we have so many more that I, if you're willing to wait for a future one, just because we have. So so many questions still. Okay. How, how about I, this? Yeah, this, will be, this will be this will be this will be one of this will be one of two. Maybe okay. I, I will I will not insist any further. Just this one question, uh, Doctor Abdul Majid, uh, is it okay today for a fifty-something-year-old man to marry a six-year-old child and have sex with her when she is nine years years old, just like Muhammad did back then with Aisha? If not, why not? Can you please very briefly okay, answer this? Okay, now my answer to you: Do you know was she a young girl or she was a woman, young woman? What is it? How do you understand? She the was she was six years old or and nine years old at the at the consummation. That doesn't matter what else yeah, so is there. Was it a girl? Was it a small girl or was it a young woman? We don't really know the details, but we could assume that a nine-year-old so girl that, is on is by standard. Uh, it's but relevant, uh, Ridwan, it's but, the, but relevant can you answer the question? Something you are not sure of it. But can you that, answer the question? My my question was. My question was not about the about what I'm she is. My yes, question was about the age. Yes, I can. You have to you have to go and visit the Brazil. There are women at the same age in Brazil. There are women at the age of nine. They are married. Okay, so go and ask them. Don't ask me, but you don't know. You even don't know that Aisha was a woman or a girl. That's the same shame for the people asking about our mother, our believer, our mother. And they don't know whether she was a girl or she was a woman. A nine-year-old girl is not a woman. A woman. I'm, I'm Warren. Thank you very much. Hi. Says the focus of this debate is diverting way too far. They said AP opened with 12 minutes of important questions, and they said, Doctor Mahid, what was Majid. your? They said, what was your your PhD in? Why, why he want to school me? 
<laughs> I, I think I think there I, I assume it's my for the PhD, same reason that you my brought PhD up education is in earlier. Islamic banking. Yes, my PhD is in Islamic banking. Unfortunately, that university is closed down because of their corruptions. May God guide them. So now when I tell them that this is from this university and these people have got big mouth, I can school them in Islamic banking if they want. The, here in UK also, I told them that if you want, if you doubt my qualification, I can school them, alhamdulillah. But it should be in a proper way. If they have got any questions on Islamic finance, they can tell me. I have done my PhD. My thesis was on Islamic banking and my uh, area of research was as a Islam, uh, Islamic bonds, which is Sukuk. So now if anybody has got any challenge, I'm willing to go with that too. You got it. This one, thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Zagros Azkan says, oh, more of a comment. Let me just try to get to the uh, questions. M. Warren says, AP's opening statement was the only part. Let's see. Not a lot of questions here. Zagros says, can't believe I say this, but even Nadir Ahmed, uh, let's see. They said, they said, Dr. Abdul, do you feel like you addressed apostate prophets arguments as much as Nadir Ahmed has in previous? No, debates? no, I'm not here to, I'm not here to argue his arguments or address his arguments. I'm here to say what he is questioning me about what I believe. So I told him, I told him when you will question my thing, I will address what I believe. So according to me, I have addressed that, but I'm not here to convince him or not even James. I'm not saying James, give Shahada or you will die and you'll go to hell. No, I'm not saying that's, that's the way they have to choose is between them and the one who created them. If it, someone it. has created, or they might have come on their own. <laughs> okay. And then apostate brain says a question for Dr. Abdul, the big bang ex explains the existence of the universe. Also conformal cyclic cosmology could explain what happens before the big bang what do you have to say to that I, I wasn't there if he was there then he has to show me a video please you got it and this, this is a rubbish in. thing rubbish they, they talk about islamic science and they want to refute this and that and they want to bring about existence of god existence of the creation and they, they themselves don't know what is Big Bang Theory, what is the splitting, what is happening and what that has explored the whole universe. We have not yet explored our earth that we are living in. And the one, he has got maybe millions of cells and tissues in his body. And even the doctors have not actually explored his cells and tissues in his body. And people are talking about the whole Big Bang Theory and universe. This is if they have the video and they have videoed that, how it happened, I'll believe in that. You got it. And thank you very much for this question coming in from 12 BK L. My shoe says, Dr. Abdul offers salam to known non Muslims and apostates, in parentheses, murtads. This is forbidden. And then says, uh, Dr. Abdul, this, uh, how are you okay with this? I didn't get the question. James, can you please make it a simple way? Oh, sure. They said, uh, Dr. Abdul, how are you okay with the fact that you have offered salam to known non-Muslims and apostates? Doesn't yeah, okay. the, Bible, doesn't I, the uh, Quran I wish, that. I wish mercy for James. I wish mercy for Ridwan. I always love that. I want because my religion teaches me la hatta that you cannot be a true believer unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. I don't want to be cursed. I don't want Ridwan to be cursed. I don't want James to be cursed. So that's my attitude. My people will not agree with me because they have criticized me when I called uh, Ridwan as brother. And they said to me, how can you uh, call somebody brother who is urinating on your book, Quran, who is kicking your book, who is tearing off the pages? I said, okay, come on, man. That's his attitude, but I, I cannot say that. That's my attitude. I will still respect him as a human being, and I, I wish good for him. That's fine. You got it, and thank you very much for this question. This one coming in from Arn. This is for both of you. It says, question for apostate prophet as well as Abdul. Dr. Abdul says, Aisha was betrothed to Mary Muhammad at six years old. What did Muhammad see in this six-year-old? Intellectual challenge or human admiration or something else? I quickly want to clarify something. I was just muted. I tried to, I never urinated on the Quran. So that's a misunderstanding. Please, please don't say that. I never did that. But uh, yeah, um, 
I only ripped it up once. That's that's all. That's the most I did. Um, you and, did kick the Quran. Yes, oh yeah. So sorry. Sorry. Yes, I kicked it too. Yeah, I did that too. Uh, in response to people saying I should be executed. But um, so, but the 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 marriage. Well, uh, I don't know. I think I think Dr. Abdul Majid could could answer this in a better way. I think, to, in my opinion, uh, Prophet Muhammad was interested in a little girl. He also expressed before in his time the wish to. Uh, he saw a baby crawling, and he said, "If this uh, girl gets older, or or I want to marry this girl if she gets older, or something like that." He said that as well, and he wanted to marry Aisha when she was six years old. He had a sexual intercourse with her when she was nine, which is uh, just uh, terrible. It's useless to 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 argue whether she was a woman or not. She was a nine year old is not a woman by any standard. That's just my opinion. It's problematic. Can, can you prove that? Can you prove that there is no nine years old cannot be a woman? I'm saying it's it's like even if no, it's what a, is your standard? No, what is your standard? <laughs> even, is even if it's a big exception that a nine year old girl has somehow is, is beginning okay, her, then, her, then, her menstrual then, period. No objection. <clears throat> no objection. Rasul okay. Sallallahu did not marry a girl who was not a woman. Somebody who's a girl, a girl, a girl who starts a bleeding is not a woman. He, she's not ready to have sexual interactions. You, you have to give me the definition when a person is said to be a woman. You have to give me. That's arbitrary. Yeah, I'm speaking of the biological standards. Uh, and and a, a, nine, a nine year old girl is not uh, okay. bodily ready to uh, have sex and to bear children who, who, just because just because she starts this? bleeding. Science, but basic Ridwan. biology says okay. that this is this Ridwan, is the beginning of the my, development. You have my email, Ridwan. You have my email. You can give me the reference where the science says that. Okay, please. Okay, I, I will. I okay, I will. Okay, thank okay. you. We must jump to the next question. This one coming in from Kobe. Kobe says, please ask what had. The innocent monkeys, dogs, and pigs done to deserve being killed and being called filthy and unclean. Is that question to me? I think so. Yes. No, no, no. It's wrong understanding. Those those animals and the dogs which have been killed. It is mentioned in all the narrations, but it is again the problem is that people are picking and choosing the things. Uh, definitely, with, when it comes to the uh, pigs, it is very clear that uh, even uh, other religions also, they know why the pigs are not supposed to be consumed by the human beings normally. And I don't want to go that this is our Sharia, we believe in it. When it comes to, you know, harming the dogs, no. The religion says, the final hadith of Rasulullah says that those wild animals, wild dogs, especially the black ones and huge ones who were uh, uh, not amongst the wild uh, domestic uh, uh, dogs, these dogs were called, uh, were, were told by Rasulullah to shoot them and kill them. Uh, shoot, sorry, kill them, not shooting. Shooting is not allowed here. But maybe in America, where Ridwan is, maybe he can have that for his protection. But here, so it was, it was only, it was only those specific type of dogs were killed. And later on, Prophet said it is prohibited for the people to kill any dog. And dogs were coming and going in the mosque. They were going and coming in the mosque of Prophet Muhammad and Prophet has also encouraged about narrating one narration that a man was walking by and he passed by a thirsty dog and he didn't have any utensil to you know quench his thirst. He went into the well, took off his shoe, full, uh, filled up with the water, and brought in uh, you know fed this uh, uh, thirsty dog. And Prophet said that Allah was so much pleased with his good day, act. Allah will put him in the paradise. So this is the encouragement from Prophet that you should look after these animals. You got to thank you very much for this question coming in from Arn says for both speakers. So assuming they say uh, starting with AP experience mm -hmm. trumps inexperience. Why does Allah then reward his followers with 72 virgins? Does he not know this? And <clears throat> okay, I don't think that's a serious question now that I made sense of it. <laughs> but if you would like to respond, uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul or Apostate Prophet, you may, in terms of whether or not God uh, or Allah again, rewards. Yes, James, 70. this is again a wrong understanding. Nowhere in the Quran it says about 70 uh, virgins. And the Hadith, when it speaks about, it speaks about the time where the war was taking place and the non-Muslims were trying to you know, stop Muslims from practicing their religion, and they were being put down by their own own relatives. Then Prophet ﷺ has said, anybody who gives their life, don't feel bad about it. And Quran says, الَّذِينَ وَلَا تَقُلُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَادِ بَلْ أَحْيَانُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ 
And in another verse, it says, Yur zakun, walakin la tash'urun, but you don't know. So those people among your family who are dead, don't uh, killed in the war, do not despair from Allah's mercy. They are alive and Allah SWT is feeding them. So yeah, this is very I... clear that was that came into that context. Not generally, move. everybody yeah, will okay. get the 70 versions. So I, according to the Islamic Islamic belief, the whole 72 versions thing is a little bit controversial. It bases uh, itself on a yes. certain hadith. But um, according to the Islamic belief, Thank every you. Muslims will Thank receive uh, virgins in heaven that are more beautiful than anything else they have seen before. And martyrs will get more rewards. But it is part of heaven that Allah creates these sexual beings for men to have and to enjoy, which is problematic. <laughs> No problem. No problem. <laughs> we ha we enjoy legal sex in this world as well. Yeah, yeah. This one coming in from apostate brain says another question for Dr. Radul. The, I'm not fully sure what this means, but oftentimes the guests understand because they've been kind of going at full speed and they get it. So they said, do you think human morality is something that keeps changing? How come Islam is last the last religion if morality keeps changing? There is no morality changes in Islam. It's the perfection. Quran was relevant 1400 years ago. Quran is relevant today. And Quran will be relevant till the end of time. And the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the best example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كثيرا. In chapter 33, Allah SWT is saying, Prophet Muhammad is the best example for all humanity for all time, all time, yes. And those people who are intelligent, people who are activists, human activists, and they know, they know what, what moral they have. Mahatma Gandhi learned from Muhammad. Jinnah has learned from Muhammad. And Muhammad Ali has learned from Muhammad. And Mandel, Mandel, Nansel Mandela has learned from Muhammad. Mother Teresa has learned from Muhammad. They have quoted so many things from, and these are all human activists. These people have praised Muhammad Sallallahu these people have said that this man was a superhuman being who could, you know, change this world into 23 years in such a way where the humans were killing each other. They were burying their daughters alive. This man has changed their hearts. This man has brought the brotherhood. But we have to them. move on more quickly. Come on, Ridwan, let me answer. Oh. Don't interrupt me when but I'm it's, answering. It's, it's very long. I know. I, 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 I respect chance, that. I, I respect that. I gave very you the chance, chance to, to answer, answer all but... your questions. I never is... interrupted you. No, it's fine. I, it is true, though, that we do have more questions, so we want to be pithy. I, I don't need to answer. We, just, we can move on. That's fine. Stop Scamming Man says, Dr. Abdul, in your estimation, was it morally okay when caliphates forbade the building of new non-Muslim places of worship? No. No, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Quran says in Surah Al-Hadid that don't destroy the places of the people. Quran says that is... Where the problem is, people don't understand that. If the people are having their synagogues, Quran doesn't say destroy them and be, you know build anything by force. No, the uh, you know uh, so now you can give the example of the Muslims in India. How many years the Muslim uh, where the kings were ruling there, and how many masajid today they have, and how many temples they have in Dubai. I lived there for 40 years. Recently, when I left 2000 in 2006, I left Dubai. I came to this country. Sheikh, Sheikh of the Dubai, Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad and Sheikh Muhammad Qasimi, the Sheikh of Sharjah, they built so many churches for the uh, Christians. So Islam is, they, they, you mean to say they don't understand Islam or they change it? No, it is nowhere in this. Quran says that you should not destroy the houses of people of worship. I want to. I would just want to add ten, I, ten I'm seconds sorry, to that. I need to do this, Abbasi Private, but we, we do have. We just, just have so just many. Ten I seconds. That was misinformation. Give him the chance, one. man. He won't. He won't have the food digested then. <laughs> I I Give have no. Chance. I have no questions for me. Please let me let me add something to this. Uh, please, if it's okay, James. Since Dr. If, Abdul said okay. 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 Uh, the, first of the question was not about destroying temples. It was about the uh, uh, about not being able to build temples. This is something that you can find in almost every jurisprudential book of Islam. Secondly, Muhammad destroyed multiple temples throughout Arabia in his own time. So that's just what I want to you, you have to give the proof to me in, in the email, okay? I already have to, uh, done videos on that, but yeah, sure. This one, Big Boy says, according to the Quran, Dr. Abdul, where is sperm located? <laughs> what? They, <laughs> uh, they asked, they said, Dr. Abdul, according to the Quran, where is sperm located in a person's body? Sperm. I have to go and ask the medical doctor. I don't know, man. I've never checked my sperm where it is collected. <laughs> I have to study science books. They, well, they but, seem to think but that... But according to the Quran. Like, yeah. 
the Quran has a like yes, the Quran is not saying go and check here and there. Okay, <laughs> so if, if it is my Quran is not saying Abdul Majid go and check where your sperm is located. I have right. to ask the doctor now. Since you have asked me, I'll check it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Zach Rose Ozkan says Abdul, Dr. Abdul is Allah all knowing. If he is all knowing, then he knew in advance who would choose to disbelieve. If we have a choice, then is it sim is it implicit that Allah is not all knowing because the chronology is no longer determined, so he wouldn't know the future. Ah, that's the problem. The people they don't know, they don't know, and they don't want to admit their ignorance. They are saying Allah doesn't know. That's the problem. Somebody says that two plus two is four. They don't know it is two plus two is four. They say no, it's not four. So how can that be possible? So these dumbs. Not I'm not saying about Ridwan. Ridwan is not dumb, but he said that I'm dumb like you. He said in his last video, but I'm not saying that. But I'm saying no. that the people themselves don't know. Things, certain things they don't know, and they come up with the ideas, and they say God doesn't know. Do they, they do know? Do they know what God is actually? This is the first question. And then they're talking about God doesn't know this and no God, no, idiots. No, sorry. <laughs> you bet. Okay. This one, coming in from Joe Schwartz says, genuinely curious. Are you open to having your mind changed on Islam, or is your goal more to educate? I think this is for you, apostate prophet. Yeah, for me, um, I. I I am open always to having my mind changed on anything. I just share my own information and my own knowledge. Uh, I don't think I'm absolutely 100% right. Even if it's something that I'm completely convinced on, there is always the possibility that I may be wrong about something. So I'm always open to it. You got You're it, most Ann. welcome, Ridwan. Uh, come to my house. Okay. You're most welcome. <laughs> you got it. And folks, I want to let you know we don't have any more time for any new questions. We want to just finish reading the ones we have. So I want to give you a heads up. Please don't submit any more questions. Then Quick Lemon says, for Dr. Abdul, I left Islam after converting it to it due to the Aisha marriage. You will say it was common for the time, but that does not make it right. West has moved on from this, but it is still in Muslim societies today. Is that true? No, no, it's not there in today. Give me one example where the woman is like, you know, if she's not a woman and somebody married her. You That's not it. permissible. Our our books of juris, uh, jurisprudence, they speak about it, and they say that once a woman has reached the age of puberty and rushed, Quran says rushed, which is that means she is mentally and physically prepared for the marriage, and which we believe, which Ridwan couldn't say anything about Aisha, which we know about her because we have studied. She is the most knowledgeable person at the age of 18. She was one of the well-known scholars of her time. So we know who was she, and definitely she was a woman at that time. And now Islam says that a woman has to be physically and mentally ready for the marriage. Then only she can be married, regardless of her age. No, no girl is is, is physically ready when she's nine years old, and she was playing with dolls and, and Turkish watching entertainment. People, okay, I can say. No, no, nobody Maybe is. Nobody. People, but Arabs, yes. Arabs, no. uh, come on, man. You no. stay with the Arabs. I no. lived with them for 40 years, man. I know how Arab girls are, man. Next up, Happy Camper says, Abdul, <clears throat> will you explain on Nisa 434 to us, are women allowed to strike their husbands if they fear rebellion? Women are allowed to strike their husbands. That's what it asks. Come on, man. How, how can a woman strike the husband? I say, you, you can, Ridwan, I'll give you the fair ticket. Come to my house and have your wife interview my wife. 32 years, a man from martial arts, knocking out everybody in the ring. I never ever touch my wife. I never strike her. Ask her, my five daughters, Ridwan, five daughters, I love them like hell. I will never ever prefer that, that to strike them. This is what I get. I get. But, from but you are allowed to, according to the Quran. Oh, no, no. Ridwan, I'm going to discuss this subject with you as well because the Quran was chapter 4 verse 34 is described in the hadith is described in the hadith Rasulullah has ind indicated that if you want to touch your woman if you, even you want to strike there is a discipline mentioned there and people are just using the word strike now my strike and a small word this skinny guy strike is different if I strike somebody once inshallah he won't so, get so a you are allowed to strike <laughs> No, come on, you have to, what, what, what do you mean by strike, man? You just said it's allowed to discipline, to strike. How? When? 
And which woman? Do, do you know it, that it, was it, it, does, it doesn't matter which one. It's, it's also uh, a man to on. discipline his wife. His wife. Ridwan, Ridwan, just you tell me. This is a personal question. The Quran says a modest woman in the same verse, and Quran says immodest woman in the same verse. Now, for example, just a personal thing. If Allah qadar Allah, I wish no bad for anything, but I'm saying if you went to your house and you found your wife with another man, you will say, oh, my darling, it's all right? No, I wouldn't slap her. I wouldn't kill her. I wouldn't do anything about that. No, no, you're bringing the word killing here. No, no, okay, 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 okay. I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't physically discipline her. No, no, no. But how, you, you use the word slap. Is the slap means a strike? Whatever it is, striking means no, just no, no, no. hitting, I, hitting. I, I, I wouldn't I physically you, discipline her. I can her. teach you from the hadith because that hadith says that you should not slap the woman. You should not slap the woman. It, it doesn't. It doesn't say that anywhere to me or to my own knowledge. But and if I'll tell you, what will you be? What are you going to admit in the public? Yes, I will. I will, I will say I was wrong and he proved me wrong. But I don't. I don't think that's. No, different. no. If if I okay, if I'll give you the hadith, you will accept it. If you give me a hadith, hadith which says which says do not slap or do not hit your women, then I will say okay, he proved me wrong. Yeah, okay. No, the, you use the word slap. Okay, you said you will. Okay, you won't harm your wife, and you will say okay, no problem, my darling. It's your choice. It's all right. This is how uh, the, this dirty God has decreed for you. But that, so that's I not what mind. that's not what I said. I would just I just said I would not hit or discipline her. That's not what I would do. No, you said you won't slap her. I'm talking about the word slap. Okay, maybe maybe I maybe I misspoke. I will not hit her. I will not physically discipline her. That's what I mean. So no no words of slap. Uh, do you don't want me to give it their evidence or not slapping? I'm, I'm not I'm not specifying slapping. I'm saying striking or hitting. I would no, not do I that. Say, and the, the Quran the Quran the allows that. Don't slap your woman. If I bring that narration, will you accept it? I'm not insisting on slapping. I'm insisting on striking or hitting. But yeah, I, I, will, I will accept. I will say, okay, well, I guess it doesn't say slapping, but it doesn't really matter. I'm insisting on that the Quran says hitting or striking. That's, that's the problem with people. It doesn't matter this, doesn't matter that. <laughs> Why so is it the problem? Convince. Nobody can convince. You have to stick to one thing. When you're bringing a word, because I'm a very specific person. But the when topic I is hitting your wife. Yeah, so in what sense? That's what I'm saying. We have to school ourselves first. Then when we must, talk about this man, must move to the next one. Myself, yes. This one coming in from. Do appreciate your question. Happy camper says following Sunnah, in parentheses Sahih Al Bakari five one three four. Is it appropriate for adult Muslim men to marry nine year olds at this point in time? Of course, yes. I'm telling you, you can marry a woman. I told you, our it is the consensus of Islamic jurisprudence prudence, that if a woman is mentally sound and physically ready for marriage, she can be married regardless of her age. You got it, and thank you very much for this question. Coming in from, do appreciate it, Azri Schizophrenia says, Dr. Abdul, based on my question earlier, you said that the fire is a literal meaning in hell. Then if jinns are made up of fire, how come we can't detect them with thermal detector technology? If you will come to me, I'll show you. You are made of clay and I'll punch you. I'm made of a clay. And then we'll see how you feel the pain. If a clay can hit the another clay, and you can feel the pain, the fire can can be you know harm the other fire. Yes, simple. You got it. And Salma Kazni says, children, marriage is R A P E. Disregarding circumstances, do you agree, Dr. Abdul? I will agree by the law, and I have the conditions that if a woman is in the country where the law says this, that if a woman is mentally sound which she can say yes or no for her marriage because there's no forced marriage in islam women's permission has must be taken so that means she is sound and she is agreeing to marry and she is physically ready for it i say yes but if she doesn't if respond that means she has agreed if, if the law says no i go by the law but if she doesn't say because anything the then her no. silence is her consent right yeah of course yes <laughs> but why would she uh, remain silent ridwan why would she remain silent? Why would she remain silent? <laughs> for many, for practical. many different reasons. For for fear, Rizwan, for being forced you, into it, for so are, many reasons. Rizwan, you grew up in a different world. Your family life is a different thing. Ask my five daughters. Two of them are married, and I did, never ever told them that this is this and this is that, and it goes against your will. No. Okay, but you, you are, your personal experience doesn't matter. We're talking about what my is what is. Experience is Islam. Ridwan, my personal experience, I'm not the one who makes the law. I follow Islam. 
and this is what Islam teaches okay. me. So I'm responsible for that. Okay, so you yes, are Islam. Islam. Okay. Coming in from yes, Zagros. Yes. Zagros Ozcan says, James, you shouldn't misinterpret my <laughs> words. It's true. Once in a while, I do tweak the super chat questions so that we don't turn into internet blood sports. And Muslim thinks your question says, Apostate Prophet, how do you explain the miracles of Prophet Muhammad and his true prophecies? Wrong questions to Ooh. wrong person. <laughs> what miracles? What true prophecies? Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want to believe that Islam is true, and if you want to believe that Muhammad was a true prophet, I'm sorry for being so disrespectful about this. I, I thank you for your question. But uh, I don't believe that Muhammad has any true prophecies. I mean, anyone can have true prophecies if you want to twist, twist them and make them true. I don't believe there are any miracles. Uh, if we are talking about miracles such as uh, there will be bloodshed in the future, well, that's not really a miracle. Anyone can say that. I can say that there will be trouble in the future and trouble will probably come. That doesn't mean I'm a true prophet. Uh, but if, if we want to talk about uh, miracles, how about the fact that Muhammad didn't even know that diseases existed? He said that uh, infectious diseases are uh, do not exist. They are a myth. And he explained this by saying, if one camel infects the other camel, then who infected the first camel? So there goes the miracle. <laughs> Must up. Stefan Zivan says, God gives men mustache hair. Why, according to the Quran? Does the Quran say, does it talk about this? What? Why God gives men mustache hair? <laughs> they have to ask God. Why are they asking us? So they I don't know. know. Okay. Now, in, in, <laughs> European, in, Europe, in Europe, the women are suffering because they got the mustache now. You got They're it. They're suffering with the bleaching. Yes, bleaching of their face. And unfortunately, men, they, they should have the beard and mustache. They, they want to look like the woman's face. And women are in trouble now. So it's a problem. But they said something natural. I cannot say that you have to ask. Now somebody will say, why that guy has got your eyes here? Why not on the head, top of the head? Why God created like that? Or why the man is, you know, he's having mouth here and nose next to the mouth. Why not the mouth behind the head? So, so, so many people can ask so many questions, but they have to ask the one who created them. You got it. And thank you very much for this question. Silver LTCE says, James, thanks for hosting. My pleasure, and hope you feel welcome, whether you be Muslim, atheist, you name it, folks. They also asked, AP, if Sharia banking is against interest, why does Allah pay interest? A seed turns to a plant, or how some good deeds on earth get you into paradise? You completely lost me there, but <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be a sarcastic question. But well, your problem is started, Ridwan. You're going to have a nightmare. See, you're lost. <laughs> Next up. Ah, Mil Milf's, started, uh, Milf's porch says Allah is just the name of a god. Muhammad is a prophet made. Uh, let's see. I, I'm just confused by this, uh, folks. I, if you can help me out by making your questions a uh, little bit clearer, so I, I honestly don't understand what that's saying. Daniel Rodriguez says, Doctor Mahid, if Allah indeed guides and misguides and creates unbelief. Why proselytize and how people are how are people responsible for believing or not believing? Yeah, it's a big big problem for the people. They don't attend the lecture from the very beginning. I did tell that Allah is not someone who is misguiding. That's the wrong thing. I did say that I quoted the verse from Surah Hud chapter uh, you know eleven and verse one hundred and nineteen, and I made even Ridwan to read that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants everybody. To be believer, he is. He doesn't want anybody to be disbeliever. But this belief is their choice, and Allah loves Rizwan. That's why Allah gave him the choice, and Allah will meet him there. I love Allah yes. too. Yeah. This yeah, one coming yeah, from. I know which Allah you love. I know. <laughs> you must <laughs> be loving your Allah, not mine. My Allah is yes. I, lo I love this this one here. But... You got is that your Allah? One... Yeah. This one is that your Allah? Yes. Okay. It's... Good. So listen, children, one day he showed the video and he made the video of the dog and he said, that dog is my Allah. And this is what Quran says. The Quran says that, you know, the people who are lost in their mind, they think, you know, the bottle is my Allah. My glass is my Allah. My wife is my Allah. My daughter is my Allah. My dog is my Allah. My snake is my Allah. Sometimes the people even they say that I worship the private part of my wife. So that is my Allah. So this is how they are. I do that too, but yeah, that's good. Next yeah, up, know, all right, know, enough of this stuff. Okay, Tunushi <laughs> says, if Allah is known as the greatest or masterful deceiver, how is it different from what Christianity calls the arch deceiver? 
you know, the they Queen have is... to go back to their Christianity scholars, man. They have to ask them. Because like, like you know, somebody is, uh, uh, Ridwan was talking about the miracle of Prophet Zasallam. This question should have asked us that how do you know that Prophet's miracle is? And people, they said that he was Majnoon. How can a Majnoon speak about something that happened? Uh, you know, Prophet didn't even travel from Mecca to Medina, from Mecca to Medina. Then he didn't go anywhere in the world as such that we can say that the, somebody will come in the future, will say that the two rivers are mixing. Uh, they're, they're separated and they don't mix. Who said that? And where, where did, how did Prophet know that? Isn't that enough for people of knowledge to understand that how did Prophet got this information? How did yes, Prophet get that information? And how did Prophet get the information of the creation of the child in the womb of the mother? Was he a doctor? Was he a gynecologist? But these people, they don't have understanding because their understanding is, you know, so narrow and so narrow and this most of this i'm not talking about ridwan ridwan has said in his video he's not satisfied in his this life so he's looking for the peace he's looking for a complete satisfaction in his life so he's doing and i wish that he'll find soon otherwise if he dies then he's uh, he will die with no completion of his satisfactory he said in his video and he said, when the people, they said, what is the alternative? He said, I'm still looking, you know, to get settled down in peace. So there are people, all these atheists, or the, the, sorry, not atheists, I'm talking about ex-Muslims. They all have bad experience in their life because of their upbringing, because of their surroundings. They blame Islam for that. Tell me, I was an atheist, born in a Muslim family. That, that's the a baseless accusation. I wouldn't say that. That's a baseless accusation. Yeah. Of course, you, you, you have the stories. You brought so many videos. They all are crying. They all are crying. This lady, mashallah, beautiful lady, nice lady, maybe. She, because she of, because be of Islam, they're crying. She will be your second wife. I don't know. But oh. she is crying. She's crying about she was, she was raped. She was done like this. She was abused like that. And then you are entertaining that. So the, the, this, what is the proof about Islam being wrong for that? If somebody is doing, doing wrong to her. If somebody, like in the, recently in the BBC, they were showing that the, uh, the children have been, you know, uh, raped in the uh, Christian church and all that. Should I blame the Bible for that? Should I blame the teaching of Jesus for that? Should I blame the, blame the Christian scholars for that? No, it's the people, human beings. They are doing that. So that cannot be, you know, uh, addressed to the religion of someone. This one coming in from... Happy Camper says, Dr. Abdul, why did the, the prophet put his mouth in the mouth of a child, in parentheses, Hassan, and then says, Al Dab Adab Al Mufrad 1183. This is considered as pedo stuff today, not a kiss. These people, they, I don't know why they're going to that book. That is called Adabul Mufrad. That book is to teach them the manners. And these people, they don't have even the manners to read the book properly. And they're talking about my prophet. My prophet is kissing his grandson and making him to, you know, th this is normal. I have seen here in this Western world, everybody is kissing the dogs and this and that, and they are just licking every part of that. And they, they have, look, look, this gentleman, they, just now he did something, maybe he'll do something more. So why people have problem with my prophet doing that to his grandson? Oh. Thank you for that. And then this one coming in from Arn Rurvik says, the Quran says, lie to them. It's okay. I don't know who them is. Is it? Does Ridwan, it by say? the way, I've got six cats. Oh, that's nice. I like. I like cats. I have a dog and a cat. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> got it. The last question they said they asked Arn said, "Dr. Abdul, does the Quran say to lie to anybody and that it's okay?" What does it say? They're asking if it does. There is no verse in the Quran where Quran says the lies. Uh, Quran says the lie, the curse will be upon the liars. You got it. And with Ridwan, that, do you I want to say, any words? Ridwan, do you remember any verse? I don't the remember. Ever, lie? I don't remember any verse in the Quran that says you are allowed to lie. I just remember certain concepts within Islam that uh, permit uh, speaking ambiguously or conce concealing the truth or lying for out of necessity. But yeah, that would be different. You got it. And thank you. So Want to the say word necessity is there. Huh? Oh, good. <laughs> you got it. And then want to say, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you to our guests. We want to encourage you folks in the comments afterward, attack the argument instead of the person as we really do appreciate our guests. They've been very cordial. 
We really do appreciate them. And they are also linked in the description. And that includes at the podcast. So thank you, Apostate Prophet and Dr. Abdul. It's been a true pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so Goodbye. much. Thanks, everybody. I Ridwan, appreciate you're it very most much. welcome to UK. Ridwan, you're most okay. welcome to the UK. I, I will come and you will, and you will kiss you my forehead. My house, <laughs> we, will, we will, if you correct me, otherwise I'll hit on your head, forehead. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Th thanks so much okay, thank then. you so much okay then. Bye -bye. thank you both <laughs> and i will be back in a moment folks with a post credit scene to let you know about upcoming debates including the one at the bottom right of your screen so stick around for that in just a moment and thanks one last time to our guests be right back in a moment and stay away from islam <laughs>